Welcome to another episode of Press Start Turbo. Today we'll be going over some of the lever movement. Oh my god, I just fucking Do it again. vomited. <clears throat> I need a, I need a drink of water. You got acid reflux, huh? Yeah, yeah. I do too. Sucks. <laughs> we all do. We're fucking grown men that drink coffee. <laughs> oh man. We're, we're yeah. literally fucking puking <laughs> in our mouths. <laughs> Jesus, I, I, yeah, that I don't, so fucking gross, dude. I don't actually I actually don't drink coffee for that very reason. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, need to st- <laughs> I need to stop, dude. What a disgusting way to start this. It's not actually started. <laughs> yeah, no, I haven't even let me get back to my intro. You just don't know your ass and vomit and bile and just <laughs> yeah, it, oh, it's so <laughs> gross in there. To be fair, uh, just like every fair, other gamer pit. on YouTube, guy. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, that's what's that's what our opinions just like are my heart and soul. Full of acid. <laughs> Today we'll be going over some of the lever movement that's happened in the game industry over the past few weeks, as well as a few of the games that we've had a chance to check out. For our interview today, we're going to be joined by a couple developers from the hit indie game from last year, Dredge. Woo! <laughs> then to wrap up things, we'll be talking about Ape Escape 3, as picked by the Patreon. As always, I'm joined by Billy, but today we have a couple special guests joining us for the main show. Please welcome K Bash and Brendan Hesse. Who's ready to spit some vile bile? Are we Yo. bringing the fucking bile from the pre show <laughs> to the main show? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me chug this coffee it. real quick. Just so. <laughs> yeah, let, me, let me chug this coffee <sighs> real quick so I can actually fucking just. Uh, Locked and loaded, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thanks for uh, thanks for joining us, Brendan and uh, K Bash. Yeah, thanks for having it's me. Oh yeah, anytime. Pleasure to have you guys. <laughs> um, I wanted to start off uh, before we get into some of the the, the games that, that people have had the chance to check out. Uh, some of us early. Yes. I, I wanted to to go into some of the labor news that that has happened over the past few weeks. Uh, one of the biggest stories is that uh, almost 700 uh, Ubisoft workers went to strike uh, during a national uh, labor day uh, or labor strike action day um, outside of the op- offices of, of uh, Ubisoft management. Uh, basically, their main main um, points were talking about uh, how their wages haven't risen in- with inflation and the uh, basically the executives, despite making um, massive amounts of profit in the quarter, uh, haven't raised any wages or met any of the demands of the union. Um, so this is this has been the biggest labor action outside of Game Studio that I. It, it, it's probably the biggest, isn't it? Because yeah, I, I remember the, the last the last one was um, Active Active Blizzard. Yeah, Act- Activision Blizzard. Active Blizzard was and like five hundred. Was it five hundred people or something? Yeah, almost five hundred. Yeah, four fifty. Um, four fifty. According- so I-, I found this story from um, Aftermath. Uh, the Work by uh, Nathan Grayson. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, which is uh, one of the only sites that I've seen actually covering this stuff, uh, which is crazy considering uh, kind of how much of a big deal I think it is. Finally, the first episode where we can actually say, hey, layoff on the layoffs. Let's talk about workers' rights. Fuck yes. <laughs> I hope you spun that chair around before you said that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I see this as, as a really positive progression video game developers are seemingly more uh, emboldened to actually take uh, action mm-hmm. which which i hope continues w- was this uh like the france wide ubisoft or was it just paris or montpellier uh yeah no it was across paris montpellier uh leon oh okay so it, w- it was like just across france yes it was it was it was, a, it was, a, it was across all of the ubisoft um buildings it being in france is not surprising to me no, no, I, that, that, the birthplace of getting real pissed off and ticked off about things. Exactly, you know? and I do hope. I mean, like <laughs> we 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 mentioned the active uh, the Activision Blizzard and uh, the riot mm-hmm. action that happened a few years ago. I you know, like many things, I hope that um, 
you know, a lot of other people will look to France as an example of how to uh, maybe get some voices heard. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I agree. It's a, it is a positive thing that is happening and I hope more of it, I hope good comes of it and more of it happens. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I think that's a, that's a really important reason why I want to talk about it or, or wanted to bring it up is because um, it should be aspirational and inspirational to other people in the industry who might be thinking about how their situation is feel kind of like I can imagine it being feeling um, powerless, uh, especially when, you know, you're seeing like hundreds of your coworkers being laid off while your company is making like record profits. Mm -hmm. I I think this is something you can look to and, and kind of collective action that you can take and, and understanding your place is like, you know, you're the, you're the ones creating the games. You should be the ones who uh, right. who get to have a say in, in how these things work. I think it's it's particularly interesting that it's Ubisoft that this is happening with because um, yes. you know Skull and Bones just came out after however many oh, years, like a decade or ever in development. Years. And, was it eight um, years? And it was like who, who, Yves Gamo kept saying, "Hey, this is a, a quadruple A game. It, oh, it's this man, huge, and it's like, dude, if that's how much money you poured into it, and like." Like that is not something to be proud of. Um, first of all, like especially given the quality of it, but games don't need to cost that much money. I mean, I understand that a lot of the um, the fan base, and you know, no hope no one listening takes this personally or anything. But a lot of the fan base they want things to continue to get more technically impressive, more um, realistic um, in the visuals and that sort of thing. But mm-hmm. um, that comes with such a huge, like just cost, like true like monetary cost um, that is not sustainable to chase. And so, um, you know, it feels like uh, to some degree, I, I don't know specifically if it's the case, but it feels like to some degree, this is a response to them being like, Hey, no, we're not going to keep making games that are like this and that are so, you know, too big to fail, Insanely, you know, that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah. Just gigantic. Um, yeah. And, I don't know. I, I hope, yeah. I, I hope that that's at least part of what is is the message here of like, hey, no, we're not we're not gonna make games like this as, any, Did, anymore. I mean, we 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 talk. You talked about like wanting games to be always more realistic and just being gigantic. But from what I I don't know if that trend is uh, true anymore. It's or about, rings I, as true because <laughs> the the last the last games that have been coming out have been like the the big fucking games have been like. Pal world and shit like well i I wanted to mention this because like there's sorry because the triple a industry has like obviously like pushed this it it, like how they've done game development they they've pushed the boundaries on what things look like but and nowadays if you go back to like cd project red's titles not to like yeah talk about my own business if you go back to like (laughs) coverage on the witcher one or whatever like the comment sections people are like this game needs a remaster with full modern day graphics and it's like i mean not really if we're being Uh, like 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 that's such a like common sentiment these days though i do understand what you're saying you're correct that like there are still like niches for like lesser less high fidelity experience i mean dude it's not even just like you whenever i see something like a cd project like a tweet from them right yeah there's always at least some replies that are saying hey remake remake Witcher, Witcher One to look like yeah. Witcher Three, and he, and I'm out here saying remake the Witcher Three to look like Witcher One. Like then Yo. I'll actually play. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's fucking go back to 2000. When did that even come out? Man? I don't. I don't remember. I did I think play it. 2007. It. I don't remember when it. 2007. Because I think it was, was it um, actually Mass Effect Dang. One engine, yeah. right? Um, and came and they. I remember the story of them being in like the same booth for uh, Mass Effect because they were using the engine. Um, and they're like sitting next to Bioware well. developers. It came out the same year as the B movie game. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> blown the fuck out. <laughs> I mean, just to like button it up. I, my read on the whole quadruple A thing is, I feel like that's just marketing, right? That's just it's, him trying to is. like cover cover Save like face. cover how much money they've fucking dumped and how many years they dumped into Skull and Bones. When really, the reality of it, like the reason why that game didn't come out like years ago, is because of mismanagement and like a uh, constantly changing design philosophy and like what nobody actually knowing what the game is going to be before it comes out. So there's, then he's coming to like shareholders and he's like, oh, this is on purpose. It's a quadruple A game. It's going to be forever. We've got 12 season passes There's also the, the pressure from an entire country's 
blue like blooming uh video game industry was in there because wasn't singapore like providing in like giant subsidies just to get yes. the game done i believe and they so. were really they were like putting a crap ton of pressure on a ubisoft i feel I, I feel like seeing how bad the development went and everything and just like having an entire country being like you gotta fucking, you gotta do something, man. I, I feel like I'd also be like, uh, it's quadruple A, bro. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I mean, we saw this. it happen once before with Rhode Island, and now Singapore is a lot bigger than Rhode Island, so. <laughs> <laughs> what game was Rhode Island? Uh, the, oh, shit. That was, was um, oh, that was Kingdoms of Amalur. Kingdoms of Amalur, that's right. <laughs> Brought to you by the state of Rhode Island. I forgot about that. Uh, that's so yeah. funny. Uh, oh, to, fuck yes. Video games. <laughs> to move on for this, uh, the other bit of uh, labor news, uh, which actually comes at a really interesting time, considering the news of uh, Vi that came out of Vice uh, very mm -hmm. recently as well with the layoffs that are happening, where they're uh, basically, from my understanding, they're like almost shuttering the entire um, like editorial department. Uh, I, I'm not. Yeah. I, I haven't read up on it much, but it's not a um, lot of people seem to know for sure either. So yeah, I think there, there's not a lot of information out of it, but it's it seems murky. to be quite a massive layoff. Um, but the uh, IGN Creators Guild uh, got mm -hmm. recognized by the parent company Ziff Davis. Ziff Davis. Yeah, yeah. Uh, voluntary recognized them as a union, which means that they're free to now actually take actions and and organize. Which is uh, which is really huge, huge news because yeah. um, IGN is yeah. the biggest uh, game journalism site still running, I believe, yeah. or outlet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, second mm -hmm. only to um, my current home of Gamespot, but yeah, or not second only. I'm Gamespot is second. Ooh, start to, a fight, start oh, a fight. Yeah, which one's better? Start a fight. <laughs> which one's better? <laughs> <laughs> Look, oh, I know. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm very heartened by this. I know a lot of people who work there, uh, or, mm -hmm. you know, freelancers and whatnot. It's a, it's a big deal. It's also uh, full disclosure. I also, uh, freelance for another site that's owned by, um, Ziff Davis. Um, so, you know, there is like a certain level of, um, I, I, I like seeing this because it's good for everyone who works for Ziff Davis to, you know, kind of what we were saying uh, about the Ubisoft um, labor stuff, uh, aspirational and maybe, uh, encourage other people to do something similar. Mm. I mean, that was, it was a big deal as, especially that IGN was doing it. And I, I think we talked about a lot on that episode where you guys were talking with me. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that needs yes. to change on the media side. And, mm. um, this is the way forward to change that stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's really good. And if you missed out on that interview, there's going to be, we're we're going to re-release it just the interview separately next week. So nice. if you missed out on that, you can go check it out. I would say as well, like to to go back to that, like how it affects other people who will be working at uh, Ziff Davis, like some of their other sites that they also own, because uh, they're a massive conglomerate. Mm -hmm. um, but it uh, the the way when the standards are raised by the union, whether it be by collective agreements and like worker action and stuff like that it will actually like you know a rising tide lifts all boats in a way mm -hmm. like the the standards will be raised and then those uh to be competitive like they are going to have to live up to those standards as well um yep. so mm -hmm. it's it's yeah it's a really positive outcome i'm excited to see what the future holds uh for that kind of stuff and and i hope uh again it's just like another thing where you're like I, I hope it's a it's a continuing trend and this isn't just like the last thing is like okay well we have this one thing and that's it i hope uh i hope it continues yeah because unions and stuff like like anytime like uh a company unionizes it's not just the company that benefits it's every single person in that industry yeah it's big it's huge speaking of huge <laughs> hell divers too <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ! Yeah, had had a fucking massive launch uh, a couple weeks ago now. Yeah. yeah, it is gotten to the point where they've had to raise the server cap to seven hundred thousand concurrent players, and I'm pretty sure there are still going to be some wait times for people, which is ridiculous. Uh, um, I, I think it's mostly. I mean, by the time this comes yeah, out, apparently I think yes. Apparently, uh, last Friday they had like no. They were saying they had no issues with the uh, big wait times, but I'm not. I'm not too sure. I, I just saw that on. Uh, I saw that on Twitter. Well, I mean, the CEO on Twitter was also literally telling people like 
hey yeah wait don't buy our game yet i like i want you to be able to play the game <laughs> yeah i know yeah. most based man alive what the hell yeah the, which is an insane thing for like someone <laughs> ceo of a company right, to say yeah. um i mean people were literally not even able to play it at that point. yeah which is like an unfortunate thing obviously but it is also like the reality of this is a you know double a game to use the nomenclature i guess that i think their expectations were like sub 200,000 concurrent or like yeah. their their like hopes were were to reach that and then you know two days or, or the, even on the first day that the game launched they it blew the hell blew that out. out of the water honestly hell divers 2 has been surprising to me since the drop like since they showed it off because i played the first one and the first one's like a top-down twin stick I shooter was- yeah, and I was going to say, it was on PS3, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it was on PS3. And yeah. I think it was on Vita as well. And this is such a like such a leap from what that studio was doing before. It <laughs> it's blew my crazy. mind. crazy. And I was not expecting it to do... I, I thought, okay, you know, people are, are going to... You know, it looks impressive visually. People will naturally be drawn to something like this. But it's doing so well. It's reviewing well. I did not expect anything like this out of that game. Have you have you guys played it? No. Oh, I've played I've so much. Cameron, I've, Cameron, and I have played a lot of it, and yes. I, I can say like uh, we're not gonna get into it too much because we still have other things to talk about. But like I understand, I understand why it's doing so well because it harkens back so hard to just like the multiplayer games of the Xbox 360 era. At least to me, it it it, 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 it checks like that. Do you know what's a wild comparison that um it said to me that clicked almost immediately? Is, he, Is it um Sector Eight? <laughs> no, no, MGS Five. Because that's what. Oh, I didn't um, even. I didn't even. Yeah, kinda. The way that the um you can do like these jumps or I guess like dives to the side, and they work the same way that the MGS Five dives do where you can like yeah. stay aiming on the ground and like move around and stuff like that and the way that you're like i don't know well the way the systems all interact in hell divers 2 is so cool like you're in and the yeah. way your airdrops and stuff it's just like one of those games where it's like when everything here is like tuned perfectly uh well not perfectly there's like still some issues obviously but like it's like one of those things where i don't know i'm just so excited for how how this game plays and like it's just that loop of discovery and searching around the map with your friends and then like team killing by accident because you dropped like a minefield right in front of them and they just walked into yeah. it. Yeah, dude, it's- that's like the best part. It's so natural. It, it makes like, <laughs> it, I saw I saw somebody talk about it, how it was like, this is everything like you, you are told not to do while designing a game with, with like d- friendly fire is always on, can't be turned off. Yeah. But it just, it's, it's, it, for this game that's what makes it so special is the chaos unfolding constantly yeah and if if the way the um setting just uh makes makes it so everybody and like the the presentation as well just every time that i've played that game everyone's gotten so into it and um and always like you know people it it makes role playing really easy i don't know how they did it it just feels really good to role play as a dumbass soldier in like the Starship Troopers universe. I mean the Hell Divers universe. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's been. I mean, it's been like a, I've been following it for a while because uh, it always looks yeah. so interesting to me. And then just to have it come out and have it like do so well has been really cool. I feel incredibly poorly for the developers who are working sleepless nights uh to to get this game into a state where it's <laughs> yeah, not hopefully constantly you don't have to crunch or anything yeah. oh that's too too late there's no way that they haven't been crunch, crunching this last like true, 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 true. like there's there's no way the, the amount of work um there was a thread that uh that i saw from a developer who worked on the uh, dauntless which is like a monster mm. hunter free-to-play game that came out uh a few years ago and they had a similar experience where the like concurrent players like way exceeded what they planned for and they just went into like detail on like the amount of work that it took to actually get it into a state where they could lead everybody in oh. and like it was it was like three weeks of just like they, they had like a uh they, they called it like a war room where they were just constantly in calls with like microsoft and sony and like uh steam just trying to figure out what the bottlenecks are and stuff like that and how it's just like it's like yeah no i have like trauma from this now which is fucked 
And I can imagine th- the, the devs at Arrowhead are probably going through a very similar scenario at the moment. Oh, Dauntless is not the game I thought it was. I just realized. Oh, really? What did you think I, it was? How did you think it was? I thought, I'm a fucking dumbass. I thought, I thought it was that one um, indie game that was on Epic and y- you ran around with a bow and arrow really oh, fast and oh, you would slide Catholics. around. I don't pathless it's yeah. they all got less they yeah. all got less at the mm. end that's why that's fair i don't know if you if you're online i mean it's hopefully these situations resolved by now but like you know give give the developers a break yeah. <laughs> Just, like they're they're working their best with the i can't imagine as well with like a live service game you don't have that uh i feel like a yeah. lot of developers when you ship a game you get to like have like at least like a couple weeks of break after it yeah but then it's just life like service is constant. you that you release and it's not it's not over yet it yeah, it's keeps dying. going and yeah. the one thing that did surprise me is that they they actually turned off the um the you can't purchase in-game currency right now i believe i because they were talking about how they were going to uh they want to earn the right to ask for more money f- for battle pass and stuff and i, I that, that that's like um Cause I mean, even then, like the the premium credits, the super credits are really easy to get. If you just play the game naturally, you can get the premium battle pass and everything. So it's been it's been very fair overall. I think. Yeah, I think that's been yeah. part of what what has drawn people to it as well. Is the um. It doesn't feel like a like a battle pass that is unachievable. That's like well, the yeah, big and one. That's and good. it's and you you can get like a premium currency just by like. You can find it just in missions. Yeah. Like you're just yeah. in like little oh, like really? wee places of interest. Yeah. yeah. Huh. A lot of times you have to do like a little a little thing like t- tell your buddies like, hey, there's a secret there's a little secret door here. Open it up with me. Then you both open the door and you find super credits. It, it, like it's like another incentive to push people to talk to each other during the game and everything. This game and really is um, surprising to me. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, all right. It's yeah. It's one of those it's things that's it's really People have seen like microtransaction pricing become more less and less micro, whereas this kind of like harkens yeah. back more to like you know when when skins cost like I don't know a dollar, uh, <laughs> as opposed and, to uh, thirty. Yeah, exactly. And this is like a game where you it's absolutely the premium pass is absolutely obtainable for free. Like you you just yeah you get free you get the the premium credits in the free battle pass thing. You can find it around in in the maps that you play on. Like it, it wouldn't even take you too long if you're like no, actually playing I, the game. No, it took me like I mean every mission. It every mission is about thirty minutes to an hour, depending. Okay. And it took me. It, I think it took me about like six, eight hours to get the premium battle pass. Maybe ten. It was not that bad. Like I, I, maybe I was lucky though, because like I. Yeah, it, it is, it, 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 it is a ra- it is a random it is a random find like you you have to mm. actually like clear a map and like scrounge around but <laughs> it, it was not too bad for me other games that uh people have been playing uh well at least i've heard well um, <laughs> i haven't been playing uh is uh final fantasy rebirth it's coming out later this week. nobody's <laughs> been playing with that there's one? only oh, one right. yeah i was gonna say there's I only wanna... one person who played it dude what are you talking about uh, wow. <laughs> in here actually in here. no everywhere the yeah the, the only coverage of this game is right here on press start turbo which is That's crazy right. they they all of the reviews are based on brendan's uh play they were all watching you play it on yeah. your little private private stream yeah and i and i like i gave him some notes i told him what to say some people were like i don't know if i feel the same way when i was watching your stream so and then you said no yeah well they you feel the them, exact them, same you know way. they disagreed That's- and they said things that you know it's okay you know variety is spice of life or not and whatever uh, yeah if you want to get blacklisted from the industry you can have a bad opinion <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How's um, your experience with uh, Rebirth being, Brendan? Without spoilers, don't worry, fellas. Yeah. Well, and I, I, I like I, until the game is out. Like I'm under embargo for certain things. I can't, I can't talk about. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, so uh, the last I checked, the game had a 93 on Metacritic. Oh man. And I would say I agree with that, like wholeheartedly. <laughs> I love it. I think it's awesome. Um, I think my, um, I mean, I, a lot of people will probably assume immediately uh hearing a dude in his early 30s talking about (laughs) final fantasy 7 that like oh this guy must be like he must love final fantasy 7 and that actually is not true i like (gasps) final fantasy 7 but um rather notoriously i 
don't particularly think that game's very fun to play, the original one. I like the story. I like the characters. I think the setting and themes are some of the best in um, in the Final Fantasy series. Uh, mm-hmm. But like the game itself, I just think it's like kind of boring mm. when especially like coming off of, coming off of six you got six before that and then you have like literal peak with the junction six system and eight i, I just don't feel the same way about oh that. my god damn you got strong opinions <laughs> um Ju- so, really junction system huh so uh yeah so um oh. so seven remake <laughs> was this revelation to me of like oh maybe i actually kind of like seven more than i think i do uh, and it did elevate the original for me just in terms of like it's mm-hmm. it's context to, to remake and rebirth just like it builds upon that game in so many cool ways and solves a lot of the small i mean, I mean some big issues i personally had with seven and i think maybe quote unquote objectively it had like the side quests in the in the first remake weren't great these ones no. are awesome yeah no final fantasy seven remake i just remember having um not meaningless well the side quests weren't really um, anything substantial. They were mostly just to up your gear, up your yeah. up your up your number, get get bigger number, maybe f- maybe like flesh out a little, uh, like just have a little character moment here and sure. there. But I, I, it wasn't like anything anything substantial no and the objectives and, and what you did in them was not particularly yeah. interesting whereas in um very Rebirth, mmo i would say is almost entirely the opposite like there are some that aren't great um there's also like i don't know five times as many um and each one oh shoot seriously it, yeah each one kind of revolves around you pairing up with one of the party members there's a lot of good character um developments and just like you know good story payoff um it's it's mm-hmm. side stuff so it's not necessary to do all the side quests or anything uh, and I, anyway like the gameplay is is a lot like the original they've made some changes to where like just doing stuff in combat doesn't take as much um atb like you don't need to use atb all the time to do stuff which is nice and like do cool yeah. stuff um but the atb stuff is still the meat of it and um it's that nice I, I i like the hybrid system of like the old school atb system kind of tor- turn-based with this action combat sort of thing um I think it works really well. And for me, I have a video that I've been working on. I'm kind of actually waiting till the game is out. By the time this comes out on the 20... Oh, no, because it comes out on the 29th. eh? Yeah, Yeah, it does. The the game will be out the day after. And my video will probably be a day or two after that even. Maybe even... Okay. later i don't know um i because i'm still really working through my thoughts because this as much as i'm high it's on a, it it's a it's a hefty game it's isn't huge it? dude like i've played yeah. 60 hours and i still probably have 20 hours of main story left and then oh wow tons of side stuff like i just i got to there's a part in the original final fantasy 7 where like you get towards the end and it's like here's a bunch of side stuff to go do this game does the same thing like towards the end and it just opens mm-hmm. up in a way that like i it was it's already a big game and and part of why i like the game so much is because of just wandering around these bigger open zone areas it's just fun and it's such a final fantasy 7 setting uh it was something that i'm gonna talk about in the video it's so tangible um you know instead of castles and uh you know that sort of thing like it's it's a fantasy world but it's dotted with like industrial factories and Mm. like old like dilapidated highways and stuff like there's this this this, uh, familiarity to a lot of the scenery that um i find really compelling and um just i don't know it does something my imagination just runs wild with this with that world um and that was one of the things about the original too that i i I really felt and they've they just really realized that in um just in ways that i didn't actually think that they would pull off and they really they nailed it Mm -hmm. um i do think that this game suffers from some pacing issues there are some times where it's like dude you could have cut like this entire section of this you know it was a two screen section in the original game now it's a five hour dungeon did we really need that i don't know Um, wow i mean five hours may be hyperbolic but maybe an hour long dungeon or something like that i mean i feel like all of the recent final fantasy games have kind of had that the remake Sure, yeah. And also, um, uh, 16, 16, 16, no, 16, 16. had some 16 horrendous has some, pacing. Oh my uh, God. Yeah. 16 drags on buddy. Cool. Yeah. I think this game's pacing is better than 16s. I do. Okay, um, and I good. think it's, I think it's better than remakes. The problem is, is what they're doing is they're, 
they're adapting one of the like in terms of storyline the section that this game covers which is like after midgar to the end of disc one which is not a spoiler to say like the developers no, have that, been that was very the, open yeah we're going to the end of disc yeah, one that that was the that was the whole point yeah uh, and that's like that's yeah. like 40 percent of the game which people i think you know it's a three disc game but disc three was like i don't know it, it, just the last little chunk this three was um, mostly cinematics yeah and like CG cinematics, that's why this three was it like exists. Yeah. And is it's smaller, but it had like beefy little yeah. beefy and little videos. So that's there. the thing about this section is it's very light on plot. So if you're going in expecting like, oh, there's gonna be so many things, like there is, but it follows the plot of Final Fantasy VII. I remember I remember it was mostly like character moments. Yeah, and that's exactly what this yeah. is. And they're great. It, they're yeah. awesome the the plot is a little bit slow you're not going to get you know a lot that that'll come in part three obviously and there's a lot mm-hmm. of stuff that they teased and seeded at the end of remake that they do they do make good on for better or for worse we'll say um so okay yeah uh I, this game is going to spark debates that will eclipse what people were talking about with the end of remake no oh. um however just like remake, this is a game about remaking Final Fantasy VII, and the things that it's saying, I find from like a meta textual perspective, fascinating. And I that's part of why I'm waiting until a little after the game's out to put out my full mm-hmm. thoughts because that's that's the other like aside from the setting and the gameplay that I actually think is great. The story is fine; it's you know it's pretty good, but it's the stuff. It's the story about this game that it's talking about itself in this it's in dialogue with itself in this completely unique mm, way that nice. um i don't know it, it's really good what games have you been playing k bash <laughs> right now yeah um i've played so much lately like unicorn overlords demo i played grand knight's history which is sort of a precursor to that and grim grimoire which is a precursor to 13 sentinels um yeah i just a ton of stuff stealth games uh the sticks goblin duology uh, i was playing just oh, yeah. yeah for a for a laugh and then i think i have a video idea <laughs> so like oh shoot there it is what's the what's the highlight what was one you want to <laughs> You know, you want to like I, I do. About? Well, do, we didn't talk about Unicorn Overlord and game news, so can I like talk about it for a yeah, hour? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Um, absolutely. I want to hear about it. So, uh, extremely demented vanillaware. Uh, <laughs> co- <Yes. laughs> they, they, That's what you like to hear. <laughs> they make a lot of uh, games that, at, at least recently, uh, harken to older eras of the games industry or whatever. Just games for games' sake, it feels like. And so we get mm. uh, in 2024 a, a legit, honest to god. Uh, ogre battle i i want to say homage but it it feels like it's doing ogre battle with like other aspects because people keep throwing around fire emblem and i hear them uh they are correct about some of that but that's not where it's actual like uh lineage originates Mm -hmm. so the game is a sicko game it's very demented you know you're playing because like most people are like busy interacting with their personas and their this and that's final Mm -hmm. fantasies like transitioning into an action rpg and persona with it's like um, endless, you know, social link thing. And these are what, like, the systems that are working with people. And now I'm going to get to see in real time as Vanillaware gambles on, like, a hyper crunchy, <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't even know what to call it, SRPG. I don't, I don't even want to call it tactical. I guess it's, it's both. God help me. Um, and yeah. see how that plays in the market. And I assume not very well. Uh, it's worth noting, <laughs> Unicorn Overlord, I don't think is directed by uh, George Kamatani. I believe it's directed by the other guy, uh, Onishi, but I'm not quite certain about that. Mm. But I believe Buddy's still on the project. Still keep your eye on it just because it's like you don't often see like weirdo stuff like this coming out these days. So definitely want to be watching. Vanilla Wear are like the only ones pulling shit like this. Well, yeah, it's <laughs> like it, it's actually crazy. I, there was a quote when I was reading their interviews where they're like they, um, you know, risk their survivability by their own output. And it's like, yeah, like the shit you put out is not mass market by design. Like, yeah, they, it's fascinating, they, dude. Yeah, no, Van- Vanillaware are the kings of uh, gambling. The, e- every game is their Final Fantasy, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. I, th- I don't want to... <laughs> like, I don't want to get into the plot, because I'll end up... Um, you know, first of all, I only played a bit of it, so I don't want to yeah. you know, speak yeah, before it, it, I see. It's, the, it's like the, the vertical... Is it a vertical slice, or is it just straight up the beginning of the game? Oh, I think it's the uh, beginning the of the game, yeah. That seems to be I the... Think so. Okay. 
like the trend these days. Yeah. yeah. I do. I, I am concerned that it might not be like super, uh, he- it, sorry, it is weird to come from the ogre battle lineage and specifically like moving from that to tactics ogre to make an homage to that and then do something that appears uh, to not be meaningfully interrogating why nations come into conflict. I know that's weird to ask of a game. Surely we can't expect it all from them, but I, I was like expecting that a bit. Mm. And I fear we're going to get a more like, let's say Fire Emblem-y thing, but that's not even fair to Fire Emblem because they've done stuff that's actually like uh, hard hitting you yeah. know, and like character driven. Regardless, someone also pointed out on Twitter, a bunch of people that, hey, it might do this cool like unity thing with all the nations coming together. And it's like, so it could still be peak kenography is what mm-hmm. I'm saying. Okay. Uh, but we got to <laughs> wait and see. <laughs> yeah. And is this a demo available uh, just for anyone to download? Or just it, 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 mm. uh, it was on, on Switch. Switch only and Switch only. it's going to it's going to be available, I think. Oh, dude, I should not talk out of my ass. Some it should be available get... soon. I saw PS5 yeah. was being mentioned, I think. Uh, yeah, I that's wrote the... the pre-order guide for this game. I'm, uh, I think it's March. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you yeah. go. Um, I've, I don't know. Has anyone else been playing Pacific Drive? Has anyone uh, else no. played that game? I'm aware of it. No. I saw it. Uh, I, I like demoed it a while. It was ago, on this. Yeah. yeah, it yeah, was, was on, on the Steam, Steam Next, Steam Next Fest. demos. Yeah. I um, I, I, I like the demo. Uh, it was. Different from what I think a lot of people, at least a lot of people that I know were expecting, where it's um, a survival crafting game in, in a yep. way. Uh, but in like, the crafting is just for your car, really. And that's like your whole, your whole thing, whole game revolves around your car and you're going into this like zone that's heavily inspired by um, Stalker or uh, Roadside Picnic. Um, where there's a bunch of anomalies all, all over the place. And uh-huh. it's probably one of the best vibe games I've played. Yeah, it seems like it. Really? I thought it was a horror game. Because no. I remember last... Oh, because I remember I, last time we... Because last episode we talked and Brendan was saying that it was like... It had uh, it had more... Um, Whoa, dude, don't put words hor- in my mouth. I didn't say <laughs> 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 Other Brendan. Uh, <laughs> dude the worst part is you both have like the same fucking handle on twitter we do. almost no i even it's messaged actually you about wild. this <laughs> i, was I like, know you what? both have it's both like brendan he does h. he does his is brendan daniel h and mine's brendan underscore lh it's like i've took two of yeah, the words it's out like, of his thing <laughs> it's like almost the same yeah but yeah it's i wouldn't i wouldn't classify it as a horror game i mean there's horror elements it's playing but nothing, in that like thematic sandbox for sure like it's 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 yeah. pulling from stuff like x files it's a spooky and, game uh, Twin yeah Peaks absolutely and whatnot, but it's I, like it's a the scares come from like the, uh you know fear of the unknown and yeah. like oh shit there's that fucking bot what the hell does it even do and then when you find out what it does it's like oh, okay that's like what like the the game kind of there's like two progression tracks which is obviously your car and then your like knowledge of the zone and like is your understanding of like of the uh, no, sorry, what was that? Is it a roguelike? Um, sort no, of. It's kind of. based in that way, but it's, it's not I, like. Oh, that's what I was wondering. If it's it had, more like, like an extraction skis. game. Yes, I would say it's closer like to because you're oh, going. You have like a home base that you're you're always coming back to after your runs, and then you can build that up, and that's where you fix your car up and put new parts on and stuff like that. And okay. then you go out, you collect stuff. And then you get out and then you come back and then use that. That's the, that's the core loop is you're going out into the zone. You're learning new stuff, progressing the story, finding bits for your car, like farming materials for your car by like destroying a bunch of stuff all around. And then like finding new anomalies and logging them and then like figuring out how they work and what's okay. the, the way to like mess around with them. Like um, it kind of does the same uh, thing as Stalker with the um, bolts, but it uses flares that doesn't work for all of the anomalies um it's it's pretty cool uh, and and the the way they work like when you first come across some of them you're like what the fuck is going on like <laughs> you get you you're like you're like oh god and it's great because i i feel like the fear isn't really dying it's more like i really don't want to fuck up my car because then i'm gonna have to like yeah. use these resources that i found to uh, fix my car it's more resource, instead of man. like yeah yeah instead of like building building better and cooler stuff so you're like you're like oh god i want to avoid you know it's it's you're not really worried about your personal like 
you know, like, oh, I, I'm going to die and go have to reload my save. It's more like, I really don't want to, <laughs> I don't really don't want to mess up my car, uh, which is cool because you form like this attachment to it, which like, um, I don't want to, spo- I won't spoil the story, but it like go, it like builds into like how the character's supposed to be feeling. Um, is your car the like, story. Th- does your car have a personality? Does it talk to um, you? Like, it doesn't um, talk like to you Herbie? like it. Um, but it well, is. We we it, had very different talking uh, cars. <laughs> <laughs> Herbie fully loaded. Let's go. Uh, yeah, I'm always a night rider kid. Um, <laughs> it's it's got a personality in that it's a shit box and uh, it it like will fail you constantly a lot of the oh, times. It, I mean, um, I mean, it, it's like the bond you have with your actual ass trash of a car like yeah, the, exactly the first it's car like, yeah you know, your dad gave it to you because there's no point in selling it because it's not worth anything uh and so you're now constantly you're having to fix it up yeah and but, it's gonna cost you like yours. 20 grand but it's but yours, it's yours. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay i i, I see it i see and it. like I see anyone it. anyone who gets into the driver's seat won't know how to like get it get it out of park yeah. but uh but you if you just like wiggle the handle or some shit like that yeah okay but yeah it's i i'm i'm really enjoying it um, it's one of those games where if you don't, it, it really streamlines survival crafting, but if you don't like that core loop, uh, you're just not going to like this game. Cause it is just a lot yeah, of okay. like tearing stuff up and then like using that to craft new things. Um, but it is probably the most streamlined of those games that I've played, which is really cool. It's wild that they made a game that like perfectly caps captures what it's like to live here in the Pacific Northwest. It's exactly that. Oh, way. Well, no just way. going out in the woods and being scared all the time of what the fuck is out there <laughs> being at anomalies your car talking to you eventually i swear to god i see that it. exact car every time that i go out mushroom hunting i see that exact car just pulled over on the side of the road you wherever could i could not have said you could have not have said an activity that's more pacific northwest uh, yeah, than I know. that yeah, right? holy yeah. shit <laughs> yep. uh, yeah. and billy Fuck you've yeah. been uh playing persona i, I hear N- no no <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have. Of course I have. It's Persona 3. I've always... It, it was my first Persona game. It was my first SMT game probably as well. Mm. It, it has a special place in my heart because it, it, it just everything about it... I don't... It, it's really hard for me to talk about it in a in a unbiased way or like... Because everything about Persona 3 is so important to the person i am now which sounds really bad but it is just like the the style of it the 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 way that it it looks at bonding with other humans there's just something about it that's really special and it's even more special to see like the amount of reverence that they they show with this remake this remake is fucking gorgeous the music is incredible the quality of life improvements from like the from like Persona Five and Persona Four, they, they they put them on display here, and it just feels so good to play again. I I like the balancing that they did on a lot of stuff. I like I could get technical about it. That's a fucking thing, right? Because I, I I know that game super well from just playing hundred like a hundred something hours in the original FES. <laughs> it's just good, man. I don't know. It's just good vibes. It. it persona has a way of like getting getting you in a mindset of just like it's so cozy to just do your day-to-day and talk to these fucking sickos and freaks (laughs) like the moon arcana or whatever what a psycho i hate that guy it's true though there's a very specific headspace Uh, that the persona games put you in and honestly i know like so i think three portable was my first persona Mm. in many ways it's still my favorite and i i got this this was another one that i got early but i didn't play as much of it because it was like a week before they sent me the final fantasy 7 uh code i don't want to i don't want to take too much over on this discussion because i have i've weird thoughts about this game Uh, I'm, i'm just curious like the transition what parts of it worked for you like in, in this in this new version of it, like like did it all land for you? Like the the, the ways that it's expanded, like the new graphics, the change of the of the voice. I mean, cast, I, mean obvi- I mean, I mean, obviously, like the it it, it it it. I feel like it it would be crazy to argue that the mm. look of it, the art direction, is bad. 
like it's actually insane how good looking this game is and how well it runs constantly so yeah i i would say that i'd say the music because i i know okay i i gotta rant for a second about the fucking music like how they release music pre-release they all when they do the trailers for their games like for persona or smt games mm -hmm. they use work in progress music in the trailers and it always sounds super weird and that's exactly why it all like that's one of the reasons why before release everybody was listening to those like the the remakes of these songs and they were like oh that sounds weird as fuck it's because they were all they were using work in progress music and they did that also with persona 5 the first ver the first trailers uh with last surprise in it they last surprise sounds so weird because the vocals aren't finished mixing i hate that <laughs> they keep doing this no shit people hate the music pre-release ah drives me fucking nuts i mean that makes sense that's actually <laughs> so that wasn't actually something that i really even picked up on initially i know people were upset about it i didn't really even notice that that was the case kind of what i was driving at though was so when i was playing this i found myself having something of a crisis about my oh, relationship shoot. to smt and persona specifically per persona because in the time since i've played I mean, really, Persona 3 and 4. Um, yeah. I've played way more of the Shin Mikami Tensei games. Oh, and same. I mean, same. My relationship like, with how I feel it. Like, I used to be like, oh, I really like Persona. I didn't know SMT very well. That's now kind of flipped. And when I was playing this, my thought about it coming out, I was like, okay, cool. People will see how Persona used to be a whole lot more like OG SMT. You know, this is, this is like, this was the bridge, you know, it, you know, one and two are way more SMT than, but three still had oh, that. Oh, they're they're so SMT. Yeah, it, yeah. But th but three still had that like, I, I it was a bridge right to this new era, yeah. modern era. Four four is when four is when it really like this pushes like Persona three pushes like the combat and everything is st there's still like it, it's not the press turn it's not press turn it, it's still uh, one more. And, and oh, actually, like a lot of the big changes in this are like around the one more system. Like, oh my god, this sounds fucking psychotic. Imagine listening to this and not knowing anything about like the, the combat mechanics of. Persona. Look, man, man, it's sicko time. Uh, we're in it. Let's go. I, I'm yeah, audience, we're in it. Audience insert, and <laughs> I have no idea yeah, what the no, fuck's going on. <laughs> it, it, basically, oh my, basically, it's just the way that combat flows in smt in shin megami tensei is with the press turn uh mechanic and in per in the persona series they basically tweaked it a bunch and it became its own thing called the one more system which is basically you know one more and then you like you can pass the baton or shift or whatever mm -hmm. the fuck mm -hmm. but although the b baton passing and shifting is from persona 5 onward you know but mm -hmm. uh, they actually did a lot of tweaks in persona 3 reload like because I, I i i remember i think in the original persona 3 like when you would uh when you would down an enemy they would actually stay down for the next turn they wouldn't get back up there's oh my god i think so yeah i, I can't I, I can't get into this it, it like <laughs> this is literally we're in the talking persona about weeds. the tiniest <laughs> It's like talking about the tiniest fucking combat differences, but mm -hmm. the thing is, with a game, with, with games like SMT and Persona, that's one of the things that they mastered is just the tiniest intricacies of the combat system are so meaningful, and like those games are fucking hard, man. You can yes. get your ass kicked if you're not paying attention. You have to con like. Uh, they, they they allow they're they're lenient enough so that you can fuck up once or twice but if you fuck up a third time you're go you're you gotta re you gotta fucking load that save yeah and that's what's so fun about these games is that it's a turn-based system that is constantly asking the player to pay attention and to like adapt to situations on yeah. the fly so that's actually kind of what i'm struggling with with this game is that i feel like this is, you know, Persona 3 originally, you know, it was called Shin Megami Tensei Persona 3, right? Um, yes. 
this has no I feel like they just they ripped any vestiges of, of SMT gameplay out of this version of it. It's and like very it's, so, it's very much Persona 5 combat. Yes. And it's sanded yes. down and it's streamlined. And like Tartarus used to be like there were dead ends and you could get lost and there was the fatigue system and like y- you know, there was this tension yeah. and and friction. It was that not always, but like this game is far easier than the is. original. And Persona I don't think 3. that that's bad, but I think for me no. and what I want being that dungeon crawler sicko that recommended you <laughs> Vaporum of all things. Um, oh. I uh, like, yeah, dude, I, um, I find myself kind of like <laughs> realizing that maybe I, maybe what I've always liked was the, was S and T and maybe I wasn't necessarily a person. I totally, person, I would, right. I would um, totally get that. I feel for me for me they they have both like their little their little niches they do me. Yes. so like I, I when I play SMT I it, for me it's lock in like I'm locked in and I'm gonna go through this and I'm gonna like think about death and stuff right and like I the combat system is gonna kick my ass and I'm gonna f- feel like shit and cry a lot but I it's mean, gonna be that. really satisfying I do that when and I then play persona SMT. is like yeah. Persona is like yippee! I'm gonna like sure. I'm gonna talk to my ho- I'm gonna talk to my friends and create bonds for life, and they're <laughs> real people, right? Um, and that's the thing. I mean, that's the I like the like the social link stuff. I think really it's yeah, it's the it's the the, the dungeon crawling. the approachability of the of the dungeon crawling. Yes, and but also yeah. the like <sighs> there is. Persona 5 is like the house style of Atlas now, right? Like yeah, metaphor yeah. Refantasio looks like a Persona 5 game. Like there was that's not to say that Persona 3 and 5 were so aesthetically separate or anything that it's like that this is you know I I can't see how it's connected. like obviously Persona no, 3 No, it's so yeah. They were very similar, but there's something you can, here you can see how it went how like it progressed from being Persona 3 to 5. Like there's yeah. no question about it. And I get why and I should be I want to be really clear I don't this isn't a criticism I don't think it's wrong that they did it I, I, I just for me I like I said it, it like elicited this crisis of me being like wait do I even do I even like persona or do I just do maybe maybe I just like Shin Megami Tensei yeah no I I can I can yeah. see that I'm glad you're digging it though because it it is like it is a good it's, game. It's it's my cozy game. I finish I finish work I just I and then I'm just like playing persona and I'm like man this is awesome I, dude, I love video games. I love it. I just look at these cutscenes and I can say them by heart. And then I see the new voice actors and the new graphics, and I'm like, "Fuck yeah, I remember this." I point at the screen. I'm fucking living for the moment, baby. Let's go. Do you remember all of the obscure like Japanese uh, history that you had to have to to play the? Dude, bathrooms? you don't even have to do that shit anymore. Press the middle, the fucking touchpad. Fuck it. I skipped those cutscenes. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Dude, I why would I ever give a shit? I'm not in school anymore. Fuck that. I'm a grown ass man. I pay my taxes. I don't give a shit about current and resistance in L- like I did that shit. I did s- s- soldering in fucking school. I don't need to do it again. All right, with that, I think we'll wrap up this first half of the show. Uh, we're now going to be joined by the Dredge Divs for an interview. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We're coming back. Yeah. But- <laughs> Come on, man. Hello and welcome to the interview portion of Press Start Turbo. Today we're joined by two developers who worked on Dredge at the studio Black Salt Games. Uh, please welcome Mikey, a 3D artist and animator on Dredge, and Alex, the lead artist for the game. Hey there, nice to meet you guys. All right, thanks for, thanks for having us. No worries, thanks for uh, coming on. Um, I just wanted to get started just with a question around the formation of the studio, because I'm, I'm interested in how that got started, because uh, from my research, it seems to be quite a small team of just uh, four people. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. We've picked up a couple extra people since our initial start. I've got some extra people to help out with the testing and some community management stuff, mm-hmm. but yeah. Uh, for the actual game production itself, it was just the four core people. Right, and how did you guys uh, all meet each other and and get get started on making games? All right, you want to take uh, the start of the formation of things, Alex, or me? I guess. Yeah. So, um, well, we all knew each other previously because we all worked together um, at a previous company called Cerebral Fix. Um, mm-hmm. We've all been there for various different amount of of years. I can't remember exactly, but it's it's quite long all up. 
Yeah, I think all of us have about like close to about 10 years of experience at a previous studio for the most part before we all kind of mm -hmm. broke off and formed Black Salt. Yeah, that's right. The idea for Black Salt uh, started with uh, Nadia, our the CEO, our, our producer at Black Salt. I, I think that the idea kind of started shortly after kind of like the COVID lockdowns looking for like at, at Cerebral Fix, it's a, it's a work for hire company. So we relied on um, other companies for our kind of business and, and income. And it was becoming a little bit um, touch and go there with the uh, COVID stuff. So I think that's when the kind of initial idea started in Nadia's head. Yeah. And was that an initial idea? Like, was that for Dredge specifically or just to start a studio and start making your own games? Uh, yeah, it was just to start a new studio, basically. Um, so uh, the idea for Dredge came later when we when we kind of started having talks about what we what we would do as a new studio. Idea for Dredge came from Joel, but we had multiple ideas. So we didn't know what we were going to do when we initially split off. We just knew we wanted to make games and we wanted to we wanted to branch out because we had always previously done mobile games so we wanted to make uh you know console and pc game mm -hmm. and uh so how did the uh, dredge end up being the game that you guys ended up going for because i assume you had a bunch of uh pitch meetings or you're like throwing off on the whiteboard different game ideas uh how, what what like stuck out as uh to you guys as dredge being like the one like okay this is this is this has got something we did do that we had um yeah we did like the brainstorming the whiteboard meetings um we initially kind of uh aligned as a as a team on what what kind of games we wanted to make and what we didn't want to make and then we kind of just shared our ideas there was three initial ideas that we had we prototyped early on um dredge was one of them and we would play test them and we would get like people's feedback and their reactions and things like that we would just kind of i think it was just pretty captivating right from the start the idea of a Cosmic Horror Fishing Game sounded unique and uh, sounded different and something we wanted to explore. And then when we play tested it, it had like a, it had a pretty good reaction with people. They, um, you know, it put them off off kilter and like um, seeing them react to the horrors and things was really really fun. So yeah, we just chose it from from that. It was always uh, designed as that like horror game that was always an element uh, of the game going into it. Uh, I think I think like. To an extent, it was, yeah, but the game did change a lot over its development and from the very initial idea as well. Uh, yeah, we're pretty we're pretty fluid in the way we work and we're reactive to how, you know, our playtests go. Playtesting is a big part of what we do. So if we do something and it does not work, we change it or remove it. Are you guys like all super well uh, versed in horror? We're not. That... Really? <laughs> no? <laughs> really? Yeah. Because... Dang. Yeah. Um, like... How about fishing? <laughs> no, uh... I don't think... Uh, Joel, I think... No! Is... <laughs> Joel did a bit of fishing when he was younger, and I think he also um, owned a whole bunch of fish and did a whole bunch of those aquarium sort of things and stuff as ah, well. Ah, gotcha. Yeah, for the most part, like, I think that's what worked out really well for us, um, making a game that was kind of scary, because if it kind of, like, put us off things, we're like, well, for other people like us, it's probably going to have the same effect. Oh, okay. So I think for people that are, like, really into their horror games, like, I really want this sort of horror, you're probably not going to find it in Dredge, I don't think. But mm -hmm. for those people that are like, I just don't want to, if this makes me uneasy and everything like that, then those people probably get more of a, a kick out of Dredge, I think. And I think that's what we've seen um, as we've watched players play it. Gotcha. Yeah, I think that was um, that was quite surprising and really cool because we we knew from the beginning that we weren't going to make a very hardcore horror game. This is a this is like a horror themed game. We didn't want to make like a game with a ton of jump scares. We wanted to make people feel uneasy, but it was always more about the atmosphere and mystery to us than being like in your face, like I don't know, really spooky horror game. I th I think what like actually lends to the horror a lot more is a lot of the design choices you guys made, especially um, I found around the inventory system and kind of the way you guys do health. Because I think where the game really clicks is when you've like gone out, you've gotten your uh, quest item in your inventory system, and then you're like, oh, there's a fishing spot. I might as well just like spend some time here fishing. And then suddenly it's, you know, you know, the, the, the game timer clocks and it's like midnight and you're seeing eyes everywhere and you're, and then you're like, yeah. that anxiety comes in of like, well, the way the health system works, just for people um, who might not have played the game before, it's um, it's not like a tr traditional one. When you get hurt, like bits of your inventory get lost, and then therefore those the the stuff that was in those squares might also get lost. So like you you feel the street, you're like, oh man, I really got to get back to the 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 like your little like um, safe harbor, mm -hmm. 
and otherwise I'm going to lose all my stuff or like things like that. And things, things start following you. You start getting like really anxious. And I think that's something the game does really, really well. The, yeah, the anxiety and the dread is very good in this game. <laughs> yeah, we did a lot of stuff to deliberately kind of distract you from what your original plan was to start the day yes. off, <laughs> especially with like, we made a lot of changes, especially with like the, like the camera angle. Initially when we had it, we had like your character or like the camera was just facing the boat side on. And then, so it was like, oh, this is kind of cool. We get to see more of the boat and everything like that. But then when we tried turning the camera like above it, because we wanted to see, because sometimes the monster would come in from like behind the camera and he just never saw it coming. I was like, oh, we'll just put it above the player. It should make it so we can see it coming from all directions a little bit easier. But then the benefit of also doing that was you don't see the actual like time of day changing. Like you don't see the sky mm -hmm. getting darker until you've actually like, oh shit, it's already nighttime now. I wasn't expecting that. And then it's like, oh, now I'm stuck out in the middle of nowhere. Where am I? And so that's when all those little things are all just designed to distract you from what time it actually is. Because that's basically your biggest resource in the game. It really is. It's just how much time and what you're going to be doing with your time within things. It's really easy to lose track, especially with how addicting the fishing, like the fishing minigame is. It's so damn simple, but wow. I, I, the amount of time, the amounts of times I just like stayed up way too late and then just got <laughs> crawl behind me, just big monster, whatever the fuck, you know? Also, a lot of that, uh, we're just putting fish into your inventory. It's like part of that OCD nature of like, yes. I've just got to make oh sure everything God, yes. fits and got to rotate that in. Yeah. I can get one more thing in. So it's just like <laughs> really simple mechanics that distract you from the important things going on in the game. Yeah. I, uh, I play a lot of uh, Tarkov, so that yeah. um, kind of inventory system. <laughs> yeah. And it's also the same kind of anxiety as well of like, oh my God, I've got all the stuff that I need. I really need to get out of here. Like if I, like, you mm -hmm. know, and then that just like this. And in uh, in Dredge, it's so great because it's like uh, that that just that creeping music comes in and then all these eyes are around you and, and you see the sanity, like you have like a little sanity eye that shows that like, no, you're going nuts, man. You need to, <laughs> you need to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> what made you guys uh, decide to go for um, the Cthulhu aesthetic and all that when it comes to horror? Because there's many types of different, like, you know, different types of horror. What, what was it that pushed you towards uh, specifically Cthulhu? Or, um, or like Lovecraftian. Lovecraftian, yeah. that's the word I was looking for. <laughs> well, we, we often call it cosmic horror as well, just as a yes. broad, even broader kind of way of saying this. But yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, I think it just originally came from uh, programmer and writer Joel who had the initial idea because I think that was always um, part of the original deal with Dredge. That was the original pitch was cosmic horror fishing mm -hmm. um, and see where that goes. I can't say for sure where that where that came from. It would have to. Yeah, that's a Joel question. Sorry. No, no worries. <laughs> yeah. If anything, it's like this whole idea that it just sounds interesting. It doesn't feel mm. like it should be an actual genre mm -hmm. or an idea, but like coming from like a creative or an artistic point of view. Just that loan sounds like, yeah, that sounds fun and interesting. We can go really far with that. So I think that's what really helped hook us in on the art. Yeah, sure. actually, also, in terms of, like, horror genres, um, like, we were just talking before about how we're not really horror gamers. Or, like, cosmic horror is a very, like, uh, what do you call it? It's it's a mysterious and, you know, it's a lot of... Tangible sort of at, stuff. Hinting at things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tangible, the unknown. Hinting at things. Yeah, yeah. unknown. Mm -hmm which is really appealing to us as opposed to a lot of the other horror genres, which are more like focused on, I don't know, like body horror or something like this. Yeah. Especially like when it comes to cosmic horror, like the, the vastness of space and the vastness of the ocean, there's a, like the setting is mm -hmm. pretty much perfect for, it, uh, perfect for it. Yeah. It's a great analog as well. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I wonder just in the development of Dredge, like if you guys say that you didn't really know anything about, uh, fishing and, uh, a horror, did you guys do a, a bit of research while developing the game into like both of those aspects, did you go to any like shipyards or uh, or uh, <laughs> stuff like that? Well, at least funnily enough, like, yeah, I say I'd never really do fishing because the one time I actually did go fishing, we we're just doing like some handline fishing off like this pier or something like that. And then so I chucked the bait in, and the next minute, this like squid like hooked onto the bait. Wasn't expecting a squid, and it was just flashing red and white, and it was just like terrifying as heck. And I'm like, yep, yeah, not, not, not done with this, not doing that again. <laughs> and then so those sort of things were just like, yep. Yeah, Okay, I'm never going to forget that sort of thing when it comes to fishing, so it became spooky. But I think a lot of, at least for me, there's a lot of stuff that I love researching ruins and everything like that, or just spooky looking places. So there's just like Google is an infinite source of just like cool ideas and references. And I think some of the places, um, mm -hmm. 
especially for, I think, um, in Inkville, there is like the whaling, abandoned whaling station. And then that's based roughly off one of these other ones. And I think like in the sub-Antarctic or South Georgia Sea or something like that anyway. But it was like, oh, that's actually pretty cool. Alex, what was your like uh, process for doing uh, research for the game and, and, and for your... Uh for the art for it um i think in terms of of research it's mostly it was online for me i didn't mm. really get, take any trips out or anything uh, we're in new zealand we're on a we're on an island it's pretty hard to go <laughs> mm. out and research stuff um i've always been like the scary things at the bottom of the ocean are pretty inspiring <laughs> um i wasn't i wasn't as into like seeing all of that stuff as i am now i wasn't as aware of it but getting into making dredge and doing research on deep sea fish and things like that became quite inspirational uh nature's pretty scary especially the further down towards the center of the earth you go it's uh, it's fucking horrifying <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, uh, brings me that, like how did you guys go about building the atmosphere of dredge because it's uh it's very uh cool how cohesive uh, a lot of the elements are especially like with the lighting uh, when it gets dark and that fog comes in and then you start seeing the eyes what was the uh impetus for that kind of uh thing the atmosphere was always a really big point for us to get right right from the beginning even from the prototype that we made we knew that this was going to be a very atmospheric game we were trying to combine very mundane sort of relaxing thing like fishing mm -hmm. with a more spookier anxiety inducing elements as well so right from the beginning we knew atmosphere was going to be a big thing the fog was re really important right from the beginning we knew the the fog was going to have to was going to reveal things or hide things to give you that sense of unease and that actually became the first like technical challenge because most games and game engines treat fog as if it comes out from the uh the point of view like the camera and our fog is centered around the player so we immediately had to change the way that system works so that all of our fog is based around a, like an external point um that's mm -hmm. that's i guess more technical though <laughs> no um, no we we love talking technical stuff here like uh because let's be real we're uh, we're dumbass youtubers and like any any moment we can learn some new some new stuff about the uh the big video games we love and like get more in depth technical stuff. We love that stuff. So like, do not shy away from that. <laughs> right. I'm sure our, our listeners would also like super appreciate that. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, the, the fog was, I guess may, maybe the first thing to get right visually then. So outside of making the, like the center of fog an external point, um, there was things like getting color and time of day, right? So there's basically mm -hmm. like a gradient of colors that we can control that it goes through based on the time of day. And that affects the fog color. Also things like your lights, uh, your boat lights will, carve out shapes in the fog so you can see further like if you upgrade your uh lights and dredge you can see further that was a thing that had to be implemented in there as well and also the sun um the sunrises and sunsets a big reason part of the reason that our sunsets and sunrises are so colorful is just because of the fog because the sun affects the color of it depending on its rotation so you'll see that it gets really like red and orangey in the mornings mm. and, e and evenings. And then the fog just goes very dark at night, um, but not not pitch black because uh, we wanted to leave room for us to put details in there. So it's actually just a very dark color. Yeah, and then we did a lot throughout development to make sure that things we wanted to be visible through the fog, we could. Uh, things we wanted to appear in the fog or uh, ignore the fog, we had all of that control. It was uh, very conscious uh, decisions that we made, and I think it contributed a lot to how effective the fog is, yeah. Yeah, it goes in quite well with the whole idea of like juxtaposition we have within the game. So like Alex mentioned, visibility is probably one of the big things that the fog really like controls and limits. So during the day, like you can see like really far out into the distance, you see all the bright colors and everything like that. But at night, it's just like as that fog comes in and everything kind of fades that same color as that fog, you start not being able to see things as far. And then so you just get, you feel really isolated and lonely. Whereas during the day, it's like, oh yeah, everything's fine. I can see forever. And at night, it's like, I don't know what's beyond just like two meters ahead of this boat beyond that light cone. So and that's what makes people scared because it's that fear of not knowing what's around you, what's beneath you or anything like that, that really makes the mind go like, what's going on, what's going on? Because I know when I was a kid, just being in a swimming pool, not being able to see the opposite end or the bottom of that pool. And it was like, ah, uh, there's gonna be a monster down there somewhere, even though it's just <laughs> like in your actual swimming pool. Ah, uh, that terrified me a few times. I'm just like in my own pool and like in my backyard, just like not getting out of the water because there's a shark in there somewhere. Yeah, I totally get that. 
Uh, for me, it was mo- <laughs> for me it wasn't a monster. For me, it was like I, I saw Final Destination as a as a kid way too young, and I was always <laughs> scared of getting sucked up by the fucking the the little thing in the bottom of the pool, which is insane. <laughs> That's not how that shit works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, dude, I, dude, Final Destination has a scene where dude. <laughs> The dude's insights gets, gets drained from the pool. That's crazy. And I was scared of that. I was horrified. Um, and that's not how it works, but you know, that's how I thought it worked. Yeah. yeah. Vis- <laughs> I was going to say the the visibility also plays back into the design of the game and the the choices there because, like, again, like I can I can probably like the an- amount of times I broke a piece of my ship in the twisted strand because <laughs> I like am backing out of this place or trying to escape. Oh my god. It's, Game a monster, yeah. And like, and it's like, I just get the like notification of like something was the, like you know, uh, fish destroyed or whatever. And you're like, God, no. <laughs> but yeah, and it's just all ties back into that uh, visibility and like that uh, that that uh, <clears throat> art design that that all just like makes the game so cohesive as well. Mm-hmm. It's like a whole yeah, a bunch of the domino effects start happening at night within that fog because that's basically when your character starts like losing like that sanity sort of thing and then the more crazy you go mm-hmm. which only really happens when you're like in dark or away from light sources that it starts to drain and then that's when you get that compounding of like things just keep going wrong one after another so it's like oh i just got to get back and then you bump into one rock then you panic and you reverse out you can't see the next invisible rock so you bump into that and when you're panicking mm-hmm. over that that's when another creature might come out of the water and attack you it's like oh now you've just gone yeah, and that's when the lights break and yeah whose yeah. decision was <laughs> it to have the lights who's yeah, yeah. <laughs> who did that <laughs> <laughs> well, as soon as we knew we could damage things. Natural conclusion. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, when it came to gamifying uh, fishing and all that, and like you, you guys really went for the arcade route with like the little mini game for fishing. What was it? One of the first things that you went for? Like, what was the what was the first thing you did? You, like in the initial build that you went for. So right from the the beginning in our prototype, we actually didn't have a fishing mini game. We had just, uh, you would just sail over to a fishing spot and you would just hold down the button and you would just receive a fish and you'd put it in your inventory. Mm-hmm. And I think that shows where our, uh, what angle we were coming at this from, which was not to make a very competent like fishing simulator. Uh, it was to use the kind of, uh, the themes of fishing and cosmic horror instead. Uh, and kind of find mechanical analogs so that's why we try to make you know half of our game sort of relaxing uh, like fishing is and then half of it anxiety inducing from the cosmic horror elements <laughs> so the fishing mini game actually came about uh later we, we we're doing so much fl- play testing people were expecting uh, a fishing mini game it was the number one thing people would say in play testing they're, they're like well, this is a fishing <laughs> game i'm expecting a fishing mini game and we knew it we knew inevitably we're going to have to put a fishing mini game in mm-hmm. and it was going to be a pretty big part of the game but we knew it wasn't the it wasn't the core we were building around which was the atmosphere and the themes so when it came to designing the fishing mini game i know that um joel uh, has very strong opinions on fishing mini games from playing mini rpgs so so do we we oh play a lot of fishing mini games and rpgs <laughs> That's so fucking real. Holy and, crap. And we knew we didn't want to make one that's that's going to get frustrating. Uh, specifically, I mean, we love Stardew Valley, but sometimes fishing minigame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. It's really cool the first, you know, uh, 20 times you do it. But yeah, we knew people were going to be doing this a lot. So we uh, purposefully kept it very simple. For example, you can't actually you can't actually fail the fishing minigame. It just takes longer. But time is such a big part of our game that that's kind of yeah. actually that's actually a bit of a, a hindrance to you. Time is the resource in Dredge, really. Yeah, yeah. It was also really funny that originally, like until like for the longest time, there was also only just the one fishing mini game in it yeah. as well. And it was only I think maybe about like maybe it was like a month or just a little bit. It wasn't that far up from like all right, it's like time to stop working on things. So we're like, we should probably put some more fishing games into this thing. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we knew we always wanted to mix it up a lot, uh, but we had so many things on our plate to finish and dredge uh, before release that it was only a couple months before release that we actually uh, designed and implemented the, what, three other fishing mini games in the game? <laughs> hmm. Which might be surprising. It's pretty yeah. late in development, honestly. They were trickier to figure out as well. <laughs> yeah, we think it added. <laughs> A lot though you know it adds a lot to to keep it from getting stale oh yeah absolutely uh, when it comes to like uh how like how the player would progress through the game and because you, you you know it, it 
<laughs> it's so funny that you mentioned that you guys play a lot of RPGs because it, to me, like it that 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 checks because like you know you you have like the main island and then the like you have to branch out towards all these like different islands with different um aspects and aesthetics and all that and that's very rpg <laughs> yeah yeah definitely. Uh, when, when did you guys decide that you wanted to go for a progression that's ba- like it, you know you're free to go to whichever island you want to go first but like wh- when did you guys decide on how the player progresses and what made you decide that that's where you wanted to go for it i think we always wanted to keep it open mm-hmm. uh, we didn't want to have a super linear um like force people down a linear path you can do the zones in any order you want but like good luck with you know going straight to the final one (laughs) straight up (laughs) we liked that i think maybe that was some inspiration from um breath of the wild or something you know (laughs) for sure yeah but we we're all we really love um upgrading and um sort of like rpg mechanics we 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 do love rpgs we often times during development used um the witcher 3 as a cornerstone we're like oh did witcher 3 do it okay our game is nothing like the witcher but we would often look at it Geralt was on a boat like <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but we've always loved um upgrading and you know progression things like that so that was always going to be a part of it uh, and it will likely be a part of any of our future games as well mm-hmm. Speed, uh, I also want, wanted to go into kind of the creatures of the game because uh, there's a lot of variation uh, from like, you know, giant sharks to the, you know, anglerfish designs. And then you also have your like, I, I think you call them like aberrations or uh, or like the abyssal versions where like you, you know, if you're out at, at night, you can get different versions uh, of, the, of the fish. What was the... Uh, the inspiration for the, the creature design and, and the uh, the look of, of them? Well, I think for at least some of the monsters, I think like Alex touched on it earlier, it was like, oh, what's already messed up in like nature and let's just lean into that skid as far as we can go and just really play on that sort of thing. Um, and there was also a lot of things that were like, all right, what might suit this particular environment? And then what are mm. the limitations of what, how we want this creature to actually behave with the player? For example, I think in Stellar Basin, we've got like that giant sea and enemy creature that's just like wedged at the bottom of like this giant hole. Originally, the plan was for that to be more of like a mobile, like octopus sort of creature that kind of like um, turned off the bioluminescence as it was like chasing after you. But then we found it really hard because it was just like uh, had, it got too close to the shore and so it'd be clipping through the ground. And we're like, well, we can't have it chase you into the shallow areas because it's just not designed to do that. So the limitation was like, okay, we can only make it do this sort of thing. So that was a lot of uh, designs were just kind of limited by what we could do for it to like interact with the player and then like what sort of design of that creature suits it and then what kind of thing in real life kind of might suit that. Mm -hmm. But as for like the uh, aberrations for the fish designs that Alex went with, I think he's got some good thoughts on those ones as well. Yeah, so for the the 2D art, the aberrations and whatnot, um, they've always just kind of been... Um, I guess stream of consciousness, like, you know, you get, you have a fish and you've got to make a real messed up version of it. I just kind of go wherever my brain goes and then lean into it. Uh, there's so many of them now though, that there's, there's some, there's been a few repeating, um, themes throughout a lot of them that you can see if you've, if you've caught a lot of them. Um, if I found that I was running out of ideas as well, I would, I would ask the rest of the team, like if there's any ideas they want me to use as a jumping off point for any of these aberrations. Um, but it was really just fun and quite organic, honestly, painting all of them. Uh, oh, the things that, the things that I kept going back to though, uh, <laughs> were putting kind of like human features yeah. on the fish. That was, <laughs> that's always freaky. You know, if you get, if you get yeah. the fish and you just put some human teeth on it, it's like, it's the, it's already weird. And <laughs> nature beat me to that because there is actually a fish that has like human looking teeth in real life. Oh man. I don't want to know that. that, that, know that it's like the dude, one what? with like the, the buck teeth that like cracks yeah. open. Um, yeah. I've seen that one. It's, it's horrific. <laughs> <laughs> what? I've never seen that. I'm not looking it up. <laughs> yeah i mean google will take you places uh if you want to go down that road <laughs> was seaman a big a big inspiration sorry what the dreamcast game the seaman the dreamcast game I've oh never you heard guys don't it. know about oh, is it is oh it quite similar God. it's it's a it's a fish with a human head voiced by leonard nimoy that talks to you and it's, <laughs> it's like your companion it looks like this 
Oh my okay. god, that is That's, terrifying. I know, dude. What the fuck? What was <laughs> dude, what I've, were they on? That's oh. terrifying. That's pretty awesome. good. Do we have any more aberrations left to do, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> but imagine it's it's like talking to you as Leonard Nimoy and asking about your day. That's basically what the video game was like. <laughs> Very strange. They made some. They made some plushies out of it. If you guys needed any like uh, oh. branding ideas for like what you guys oh, no, do for merch no. and things. Oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> that is terrifying. Um, to like change topics a little bit. Um, I would. I think it's safe to say Dredge has been a bit of a, a success. Uh, you guys were nominated. I think for best indie game or was it best debut? I, I can't. Uh, both. Uh, <laughs> both? You know yeah. me for both. Oh, well, yeah. well, that's massive for like a, a team for their debut game and like it's mm -hmm. uh, sitting at overwhelming positive on Steam, I believe, uh, with like a tw 20,000 reviews, which is yeah. crazy uh, it's, for it's massive <laughs> for this yeah. game made by, uh, you know, it, we started at uh, four people. How is uh, how's the team reacted to the success and how's that? What's that been like for you guys? <laughs> None of us actually expected it. I think. We were like trying to <laughs> forecast as you would do to like, all right, how many, like how much sales you reckon we could actually make off this. And then, so you do all the algorithms and like, all right, if we get these many wish lists, then this is what we can expect and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And then I think we were like on, we're doing our launch party. Like we're on a boat and then uh, just to celebrate it because why not? Um, and then it was just <laughs> like, we just see like, uh, so we've just hit like our one month goal and it was just like after a few minutes it's like we've just hit our like year goal after like halfway on the boat like okay oh man well this is doing way better than we thought so that was really good and then I don't think we were like any of us are really expecting the kind of success we've managed to get out of this yeah it was crazy I mean we were all ecstatic to see how it was received we during development there was uncertain times you know we're making a little indie fishing game. How many people like fishing games? I, I, don't, yeah. I don't know. Um, and you start to question your decisions. Um, but yeah, the, the reception has been mind blowing. That's part of the creative process. You get halfway through a project and you're like, oh my God, what if, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the fear. Oh yeah. What do you what do you guys feel like uh res like have you have you done any discussions like afterwards like what what do you feel like resonated with people and uh and and made this this game the hit that it was? Well, I have a theory um and it's it's I mean I I can't prove any of this but I feel like we have um we've hit on a niche genre that we didn't kind of knew existed which is uh cozy spooky games <laughs> yeah actually yeah a cozy horror we, yeah <laughs> yeah cozy horror we didn't know that we didn't know that it was a kind of a thing that would resonate with people there are other examples you can find out there that are that are similar there are a lot of cozy games that have like some spooky things in them uh my mind has just gone blank on on them unfortunately <laughs> but yeah no there are there are others and it turns out it's, it is a bit of a thing uh we didn't really know about that during development and that came as a surprise to me. I think that was a, contributed a bit to our success was this surprise genre that we fit right into. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. what really helped as well with that whole idea is the fact that we tried to make the game pretty much as accessible to as many people as we could. So the people that actually seem to enjoy it the most are basically like those cozy gamers, it feels like, because they're also the people that kind of get scared the most when it comes to these spooky sort of things. And then so they're the ones that probably panic the most when it does get tonight. So they actually get more of that fear and enjoyment because they never really get far enough to actually experience the, any of the spooky stuff or like the truly scary stuff. So it all just stays in their head of what might actually be out there. Mm -hmm. Then you get the people that are more like your core horror gamers. And then after you've seen the things a few times, it just kind of becomes like, oh, that's not as scary anymore. I'm used to that sort of thing. But for the people that are just trying to just, I'm just trying to fish and make my way through the game and they're always trying to get back before the night falls, then they really get a kick out of like the whole sort of loop that we've been trying to create throughout the game. And then because there's a lot more of those people that are just getting into that sort of thing, it just means that your audience is a lot bigger to pick up it. So you're not just focusing on your core horror gamers. And it's also like a niche sort of thing where people are like, this seems new and unusual. I want to see what it's like, because I think at the moment, like the, the game market is really saturated right now, especially on Steam and everything. So if you really want to see, like this sort of idea, it's like it's something new. No one really knows what it's about. So it's like the perfect time when people are in between all these bigger, longer games like your Borders Gates and your Zeldas, which take hundreds of hours to kind of play through. So it's a nice little mm -hmm. bit in between things, which I think we managed to find like a perfect timing. I think 
so many things just fell into place for when we released the game and what the market was maybe looking for that may have probably helped out to the sort of success we managed to get. Yeah, and there was some feedback that really made us realize uh, that we had kind of hit more this cozy audience, which was a lot of players uh, early on asked for a, like a, what do you call it? Well, we ended up implementing passive mode, basically. They wanted an easy mode. They wanted to turn a lot of the scary stuff off. So we actually ended up implementing a passive mode, which you can switch on, which makes a lot of the monsters harmless. Well, all of them, really. Um, so people who are a little bit more freaked out can still play the game. Uh, they'll still see these things, um, but they won't actually affect them and we got more requests for that than a hard mode or a spookier mode that's interesting because there's another nautical scary game <clears throat> that i like quite a bit called soma did a similar thing a way back when that game came out and uh yeah it's like one of those things but uh i i actually yeah i think that like you guys are like completely right on that why the game like hit like that because it it kind of um depending on how you play the game depends on how you know much scary stuff you see you can you can like play the game very precisely be like all right it's hit this time it's going to take me this much time to get back i'm not going to see a single goddamn like scary thing uh, my fish are all safe i'm not touching the sides kind of thing so it really like uh it can appeal to a lot of people because you know if you want that uh to get into that that horror element and like see all the scary stuff you can but also you can play it in a very like uh different way mm -hmm. Yeah. as well and we saw that when we did like extensive play testing and then i don't think we ever saw like two players ever play it the same way like everyone played it like differently like some people were just focusing on like i just want to catch every single type of fish and then basically pokey decks that game up <laughs> and then you get the other people they're just like i just want to know more about the story i want to find out more about the lore what's going on over here then people that just want to explore and then people that just want to like i just want to see what's scary and then they just go off into the middle of nowhere and like, yep, that's what's out there. <laughs> Damn, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> As we get to the end of it, I just want to know what's uh, what's next for uh, Black Salt Games. Obviously, you don't want to like spoil anything about what you're working on and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, if, if you just if you've got anything to say about that, well, currently we're working on our um, next DLC, which is the which is a bigger one than our previous one. We've released the Power Reach, which was a mm -hmm. an extra area, basically, which was an area that we wanted to do early on, but actually had to cut uh, because we couldn't fit it in. So we, we got to go back to that, which was really cool. So uh, we're going to be working on this DLC for a bit longer. It's not announced when that is coming out yet, so I can't, I mean, I can't talk about it. Uh, but beyond that, more games. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll probably do, like, we're probably going to go back to basically what we did to come up with Dredge, which will be pitch a bunch of different ideas. In fact, funnily enough, like before like Dredge had its success, we were already starting prototypes for what might be our next game because we didn't think that, all right, the whole idea was like, all right, we'll release Dredge, we'll learn what we need to do, and then we're not expecting too much of an ROI, but if we get something, great. But we're going to start fixing this next game, which will be bigger and better or whatever it is. And then because it did so well, and then we had like this one little thing that was like, if we make this target, then maybe we'll do a bunch of extra DLC and content because you'd be kind of silly not to. But so we started to do a couple of prototypes and then it was like, oh, actually, we should probably like type some loose ends and add some extra content to this game. Let's do that. And then so we shelved all the prototyping for a bit longer. But I think uh, it's not too far off before. I think, yeah, sometime this year, we're going to be start figuring out and planning what the next sort of game might be. And we have no idea what that's going to be at this point in time yet. There's still a lot of like ideation and brainstorming to go there. Mm -hmm. What's it been like returning to uh, to Dredge uh, to, to work on this DLC? Uh, Alex, your thoughts on fish now? Uh, oh, I've drawn, <laughs> I, I've drawn enough fish. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so many fish. It's real um, funny because I think Alex and I, I think like, um, previously at our other studio and stuff, I was doing a project and I ended up making a whole bunch of like spooky sharks and fish. And I think two of Alex's <laughs> other projects were also involving drawing fish. And this is before we even thought Dredge was even going to be a thing. So I think half of Alex's like professional art career has been drawing fish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of my career has been drawing fish. It's been a, a pretty weird thing for the universe to throw at me, but it's, it's fun. <laughs> so ne next game, no fish? <laughs> Big fish must be on the cards. Yeah, we'll we'll see. <laughs> I don't know. You never know. All right, wait, I think uh, I think we might end it there. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, both Mikey and Alex. Uh, of course, you guys. Uh, who are listening if you haven't already uh, you can go check out dredge it's on steam it's on it's on all the consoles it is I yeah. it yeah. is on all the consoles mm -hmm. yeah so, 
give it a check there. Any last uh, words or thoughts? Not from me. Just thanks for having us. It's been a good been a good chat. Thanks. Yeah, cheers for having us. It's been really fun. So awesome. Yeah, thanks thank for coming you, on, guys. Thank you for being here. And uh, thank you for your patience when my computer decided to crash. <laughs> Just <laughs> hard crash. <laughs> Not, a no problem, problem. Not a problem, Not a problem. Welcome back to Press Start Turbo. Uh, this is the gaming half where we're going to be talking about Ape Escape 3 as chosen by the Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> the next game we're going to be playing is uh, for this show is going to be Yakuza 0. Yes. So if you want to vote on the game after that, uh, you can head over to the Patreon and make your yeah. voice heard. $5 and above. And also if you want to ask a question or just talk about Yakuza, bro. If you want to just talk about Yakuza, we'll we'll read your comment. We'll talk about Yakuza with you, kind of, the girl reading this. All right, just to get started here, I just want to go around the table. Um, what's everyone's experiences with Ape Escape 3 before? Okay, uh, shut up. I'm going to start. <laughs> it's my favorite game. Like, dead ass, my favorite game. I know it switches between Kingdom Hearts 2 and this game, but right now, at this moment, it's my favorite game. It is the game I have played the most, probably ever. I've been this game at least 12 times. <laughs> Every single time I've 100%ed it, I've 100%ed it with both characters. I've played Mezzel Gear Solid at least three times. I know so much about this fucking series and these fucking games. These are part of my personality basically i love these games so basically i wanted to start saying this because if anybody talks shit i'm going to see you after class all right God, damn k-bash <laughs> what's, what's your experience with Ape escape 3b i was gonna and say be, and thread lightly that's quite a resume i played it for an hour or two <laughs> <laughs> Good did you know anything about uh, ape escape 3 going into it no i didn't even know anything about ape escape in general <laughs> until i played it uh it's cool i didn't know this game existed until you told me to play it for this episode, so. <laughs> yeah no i that, that i mean i'm gonna be honest like i'm i i know i made, I made a joke about like oh you're gonna, you're gonna be dude this knew, game's old as fuck man i, knew I, I get it what an ape escape was and i i recognized yeah. the uh eponymous apes yep um the I hadn't seen anything about the original two either until a buddy of mine streamed it on Twitch like four months ago. So like, mm -hmm. man, I yeah, this is this was my first experience with it. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, also my first experience with uh, Ape Escape. I've I'd heard about it via Billy. Uh, <laughs> I won't <laughs> shut up about it. Yeah, <laughs> like you, dude, there are so many comparison points you make to sort of things. Right, this is just like an Ape Escape. <laughs> Like, um, <laughs> um, I, 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 but was I right? Uh, I, I have some comparison points too that are fucking unhinged, and I can't wait to bring. I them have up. some comparison points as well that I want to bring up. <laughs> but my knowledge was so little of this. I thought you played as the ape, uh, the apes. I thought it was like no, gonna be like a I fucking. Mean, it there are some of the because these games are very, these games are pretty niche, but they're like a massive series. There are so many spin-off games and like actually numbered games. This is the last numbered game though. Uh, this is Ape Escape 3 is the last numbered game and it also is like the last of the t technically the last of the Ape Escape games because I don't count Ape Escape Move as one of the games. I'm getting the Kingdom so Hearts connections now mm. okay <laughs> three numbered games lots of spin-offs got it Ooh, it kind of is you're so fucking right how long has it been since the last day uh japan only or uh just any like is that ape escape i feel like ape escape 3 is i mean ape escape move was the technically the last one and that was 2011 oh, Jeez, so it's been a while so basically uh sony has a lot of respect for their own ips <laughs> <laughs> it's a game by japan studio so it's um one of their uh bloody hell i forget the people like who made or or through other teams like handled eco and legend of dragoon etc yes mm -hmm. yeah yeah damn one of the reasons why i wanted to, uh, i i i wanted to talk about it really badly with you guys specifically is because the this game is so the controls are so particular and i know mm -hmm. you guys are 
fucking freaks that <laughs> love weird like yeah. <laughs> i know this you, makes you, so you much guys, sense now okay All yeah right. no because yes. i mean especially because i mean obviously k bash your video on oh, steam bot yeah. chronicles yeah. that's what when you were talking about the controls i was like oh that's apis <laughs> yeah, game literally. that's actually like the controls of one of the of the when you control one of the big robots in apis I, I could not literally believe it like i was i picked up the robot I know. and i didn't do the tutorial or whatever and i was like what how does this is weird and then i was like wait a minute <laughs> fucking <close>. yeah dude, <laughs> it's exactly the same it's amazing <laughs> Oh god. Yeah, the the controls are oh, dude, I I I feel like I'm you got to stop me from talking uh, cuz I'm never going to shut up about how um, much I love this game. Well, uh, we could like start from somewhere like why should anyone give yes. a shit about Ape Escape? And I can t anyone can answer why. You but, go for uh, it. Let's just Yeah, go for I'll it. I'll just you know, cuz I just started. It's a quirky yeah. cute game. It's got some funny stuff. And you do a lot of s funny things in it. You, you got a little hula hoop and you go zoom through the yeah, level if you, you want to. Yeah. And it's kinetic. You have to like spin the stick to get the shit fired up. And yeah. Then go, that, like, you know. Because, yeah, because it, <laughs> I feel like we got to talk about the controls because the controls are, ba the game is the controls. Yeah. And mm -hmm. all of the Ape Escape games, you don't use the face buttons. You use the, um, yeah, that, you use the stick. Yeah. Yeah. That threw me oh, because yeah. like. When it, you know, you look at the UI and I press mm -hmm. the, the button to use my, uh, to use my net and it just like was flipping. It was like, going <laughs> ch -ch -ch -ch. and I was like, oh my God, my controller yeah. is fucking, it's freaking out. There's something wrong with the, uh, emulator that I'm using, whatever. No, dude. Yeah. You use the stick and I, and then it clicked and I was like, oh, it's King Sealed 4. I'm playing King Sealed 4. <laughs> Oh my okay. god. Wow, we are going through every <laughs> I told you. I told you the yeah, connections that's a, were gonna what, be unhinged. We are, we're reaching <laughs> this is the most unhinged group of people to be talking about this fucking game. It's so fucking it's, crazy. It's got it's got the it's got the bubbly, like cartoony vibes of Mega Man yes. Legends with the thumbstick based combat of Kingsfield 4 yes. and Shadow Tower Abyss. Yeah, it makes it makes so to much explain, sense. To explain even further, basically, like you use the thumbstick. So if you have your sword equipped or your stun clubbed, rather, if you if you like flick it forward, you're going to go forward. If you do an art like a 360 motion, you're going to do a 360 and spin around with your sword. And basically, every single gadget in the game is built upon that principle, mm. or like it, it, every single gadget. And I know you guys only played up to because I, I I I know it's like a like. For the show, we play a lot of these games, and we, I, it, it would be crazy to tell people like, "Oh, you have to play the entire fucking game." You guys played up to <laughs> the blue. I told day. you guys the second major to blue. play up to yeah, yeah the uh, Which, monkey blue fun. Yeah. Like for me, that was like maybe like an hour and twenty. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Similar yeah to me. That's a that's around the the time I I was aiming for. That's pretty because this game is very like it's not it's not a long game and it it's. It constantly gives you new interesting gimmicks to play with, new moves, new like, and all the theming around the game. Oh, oh I, so, I like all the was, movies and the stuff. Yeah, that's what I wanted so to go into the good. levels and the themes and the setup for the music and stuff like that. Um, mm. This is my comparison point. Uh, I don't know if you guys played. Astro's Have you guys Playroom? played The Witcher? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Astro's Playroom. It was the free game yes. bundled with the PS5. Yeah. yeah and good. I yep. think that took a lot of inspiration it made? from Ape Escape in terms well, of... Well, it was made by the same... Wasn't it made by the same people? Okay. I have no idea. It, I, cause um, Team Asobi... Because I, I think Team Asobi used to be Sony Computer Entertainment Japan. Uh, yes. Oh, Japan Studios. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Japan yep. Studios. Yeah. Well, then huh. that makes yep. a lot of sense. Because, like, the way that yeah. the... Uh, it's really... I, my, I, to, to go off on a slight tangent, my favorite thing is the uh, monkey radar... Uh, yes, with. dude! All the little fucking stupid things <laughs> get, they say about the monkeys. Yes, yes. So, so basically, this is like the tool the game gives you to locate the monkeys, which you need to go find. And we didn't collect. even, yeah, we. We uh, didn't that's even the talk main, about the... That's how the, the game works. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the game works. Basically, it's level-based. You have to find all the monkeys in a level and capture them with a net. I know it's unhinged. 
most normal premise. Th- yeah. That's the best part about Ape Escape is that like the premise is very simple, and, but uh, for like the gameplay, if it were in a normal control framework, like just tapping mm-hmm. the action yeah. button to swing a net, it would not have the same level of like no. uh, sucking the player into the immersive like ape catching experience. It's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. it's great. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Um, the mo- monkey radar is awesome because it has this like you like have to like. Uh, use again everything uses the analog stick it sticks to this like theming for its controls uh through through every single different like mode and gadget you get Mm -hmm. but you have to like angle the right stick around look for the monkey and then when there's a monkey that shows up it will it will show up in like the bottom right in like a little picture in picture and you can see it like smiling or whatever like action it's doing then you like press the left stick uh left trigger down it brings it into this like full one it has these like ratings for like uh how alert alert this speed, speed tells you its birthday like what its yeah, name it has, is what it's wearing every single monkey has a name and they also have a little a little thing about them like so, like it, it, sometimes it's like oh this monkey is a fucking dumbass that enters every sweepstake that it, it, it <laughs> yes. can find uh yeah no uh, and another funny thing is like all these monkeys are there are 365 monkeys there's one for every birthday and there is an extra m- game mode with hor- like horoscopes oh, and that's- like okay. yeah. and birthday and dude and birthday f- fortunes and a bunch of other stuff. So it, everybody has a monkey associated. I was yeah, really with confused them. about that because I kept being yeah. like, "Oh, this is my birthday," and then the game was like, "No." No. Yeah, no, you have to like, find the monkey you, you have with to, your what do you birthday. Mean, dude, I'm telling you what my birthday yeah. is. You don't get to say that it's not my birthday. <laughs> no, no, you, it, like, it, oh, it shows okay. you it shows you what the what your what your monkey is. But yeah, okay, this is, okay, okay. I put the screenshot in in guest, but this is like one of my favorite ones is cuz like all of them Monta. have all yeah. of these ha- all of them have this like little line which is underneath them of them like saying like a little like quote or something and uh, yeah. this one is this guy on this like giant dartboard practically and he's just like there's two monkeys up there and like both of them are basically like it'll happen to the other guy like yeah <laughs> they're both like he's gonna shoot the he's other gonna, one he's gonna it's get the gonna other one me. it's not gonna be me i'm different it's a <laughs> it's it has all oh, these like dude. little really cute vignettes um that remind me reminded me of Astro's Playroom where they have all these uh, references to other PlayStation games and like uh, con- consoles and stuff like that and uh, and I always thought that was like really cool and that as the like little secrets you can find and this is like a kind of a core part Dude, of this, this, this game. game is all about secret finding and hunting like there yeah. are there are hidden monkeys in every single oh, dude, i mean that this is a gameplay spoiler so i don't want to get into it but there are there at one point in the game you think you beat it and then it's like actually there are there have been secret monkeys in every single level and oh, dude, it's so cool man so the the another game that this really reminds me of which also has like not quite as much of a emphasis on secrets, but it reminds me a lot of medieval mm. on the PS one. And, um, and then they, they remade it recently. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I have this question and it's, I think it's obvious now that I'm thinking about it, but like, is this, I'm not a 3d platformer guy. Is this fit into that genre? Like, would you call it a 3d platformer? 3d platformer? Yeah. Like, I, I'd say it's a platformer. Okay, Cause like, there- I always I always assumed that there was way more platforming in these games. I was surprised at how much of like kind of just a like an action game, like arcadey action. It's more game like games. a collector. It depends. Or, what it, it's a collectathon, I guess. Collect-a-thon, but yeah. it, it it really really depends on the level because some levels are far more, uh, and also it depends on which morph you have at the time. Right, okay, because that's another thing. You guys you guys got to the point where you could be a cowboy and a knight. Yeah. Another yes. thing that is so cool about this game and I love is that you can morph into different versions of the main characters. So you have a knight, you have a cowboy, you have a a, a belly dancer, right? <laughs> like you. you and you, there's all these different characters, but specifically there at one point, oh, I don't even know if I should spoil this, although this is an old ass game, but you get a ninja at one point and it changes mm-hmm. your moveset to be very plat, like platformer. Like okay. you can walk mm-hmm. on, like run on walls and you have a little glide and you can like, it, it becomes much more of a platformer. The, the more you go 
you go on with the game because you get more gadgets and you get more transformations that allow you to traverse different parkour sections. Oh, damn. That was, yeah, that, that, uh, morph system. And also like, uh, we only really got to see two vehicles in the game, but I assume there's going to yes, be, there's, there's going to be lot. more. Um, oh yeah. It's the game is just constantly, at least from what, what I've played is just like changing it up to try and make it, make it more interesting, adding more gimmicks and like, ways to interact with the game and uh yeah it was the you're in the racetrack and you're just like running over monkeys and they just get angry at you (laughs) yeah then you're like all right i'm trying to get you in it but yeah i I, that control scheme thing is like actually at the very beginning i didn't like like gel with it uh but as as it gets on and like you get becomes natural yeah and then the monkeys that like it, it how much it adds to um you know, when you're trying to capture a monkey with your net and it's like ducking out of the way mm. and you can like, if you're, yes. if you're seeing where it's going, you can like flick the, the yeah. stick in the correct direction to recatch you can, it. Yeah. It feels so good. You can, you can like, cause, like, cause monkeys, the, the monkey AI, I, I think is fucking so awesome, man. Cause the, the alertness, the temperament, the speed and the attack, like all these stats are actual stats. Like they... Uh, every monkey acts different, and uh, you can tell what the monkeys are going to be like, but by, by what pants they're wearing. Oh, so, what? yeah, blue blue pants monkeys are shy. Red pants monkeys are very aggressive and are going to attack you and steal your gadgets that more often. Threw me, dude. That was oh, that yeah, was when they, I was like, yeah, oh, this is a this monkey, is a game that I like. They're fucking yeah, with me. I like this. The monkey can because a monkey can jump on you, scratch you steal your net and capture you oh they can actually capture you and if you get captured you get sent back to the home base and then the lady i I can't remember her name off the top of my head right now but she's just like you got fucking captured by a monkey what are you stupid (laughs) (laughs) i love that lady she's insane i love the writing of this game is crazy like it you know what oh actually which version did you play uh us us because you that was okay because that actually depending on if you play the pal version or the us version the mood is totally different what do you mean it's the the script is different and the peop the the things they say is different like so the, like, like are you saying like it's not like the, a happy go lucky thing to like oh fuck the monkeys are, <laughs> they're ser- no i mean it, it's still a cartoon throats. it's still <laughs> it's still cartoony but it's a different type of cartoony okay. it's really it, i i think it's really weird but i i played both versions and i i i maybe it's a bias because i grew up with the u.s version but i just really like the way the u.s version has a bit of like it's not just like cartoony, like I, I don't know. There's a bit of an edge to it where it's like they they like ah, I don't know how to explain this. I'm I'm trying to find the point. Either way, all that to say, like it depends on what uh, version you play. They do have different uh, vibes. Did anyone else buy something from the bookshop? No. no. Okay, I've got an excerpt I want to read from a book that I bought from the bookshop. In the so which uh, one? M- what Monkey White likes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> So Monkey White is the is the first, first boss. boss. Uh, yeah. So in the game, the dragon. in your like home area, you have like a little shopping district you can like walk to, and you can spend your mm-hmm. coins that you get throughout the game. Um, and it's ma- mainly like like fun little side stuff, or like if you want to buy more lives. Well, okay, you you say that, but it it like you're at the beginning. You can mm-hmm. actually unlock an entire game mode that is just a collaboration with Metal Gear Solid, and it's a full campaign. What? <laughs> It's a full campaign. No, I'm not even kidding. Like, yeah, it, it I, is a I've full Metal this. Gear. So- is it Metal Gear Canon? I mean, well, so I mean, a lot of a, a lot of the Metal Gear games have like Ape Escape stuff in yeah, them too. So it's like a very three. hop on hop on this stream. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll show you because I I have this on hand. There's a Metal Gear mode, and it's, it's actually amazing. Metal Gear. Oh my with, god! But that you is play just Metal Gear. It's the rations yeah, no. instead of the cookies. <laughs> yes. And you play as Peepo Snake because it's a Peepo monkey, and <laughs> it is actually a full on like th- it's not too long. It's like an hour thirty minutes maybe, but it, it is a full on mode of like they're doing the the same animations as Gear Middle Solid. Gear. Wow. Yes, it's That's crazy, dude. Peepo the- Snake. <laughs> 
he posted the, and and the entire time the and you actually meet uh wait, you there it fight is. on the oh my god <laughs> yeah no you actually meet you actually meet snake at one point and he's just tied up and you fight oh, a that's where went revolver the ocelot the tank oh my mission. god dude this is insane it, it, this game is fucking crazy they, there are game there are entire game modes in this game but yeah that are hidden extras that you unlock at the end of the game like there's there's a fighting game mode there's a like actual fighting game mode it's fucking crazy there's a weird monkey throwing mini game where you throw a monkey you, you're you're playing as a monkey that's throwing another monkey and you're trying to get a high score like some fucking some weird like uh monkey ball game it's so there's so much to this game i like, want to make a video just looking at this shit <laughs> Dude, you should. Dude, you can also make your... Because I don't know if you guys went into the actual movie theater. I did. Because yes. you can create your own movies right. in this game. Like, you can film... They don't the make stages. them like this anymore, man. They don't make them like this anymore. <laughs> My um, memory card from, like, while I was growing up, it is full. It's just fucking full of like these little movies I made like in the in the monkey movie creator. Like, I, I spent so much time in this game. I would love to like have like a behind the scenes of the development of this game because so much of this stuff is just like it's just put in there as like someone was like I I want to do this kind of Wouldn't thing. Would this be funny? Would this be funny? Wouldn't this, this be fun? Fit? And they're like, yeah, I guess put it in. Like it's a, a monkey game. Yeah, it fits. <laughs> but yeah, to get back to it, like what I was trying to say, what I was trying to say before is the bookshop, and you get these like little paragraph like written things about from characters uh as you buy the books yeah. or you could buy hints for the game like how like stuff like that and but yeah this one that i that i got from from monkey white and, it, and it's titled what monkey white likes and it goes i can't take it what a whopper bananas and motor oil smell pretty good but how about the soles of my feet it's like heaven when the odor hits red spots oh, are the worst my. They make me go dizzy. I want names. I, oh, dude, you, you okay? You have not. There is a boss. Okay, there is a boss. I I don't condone. I was gonna this, say, is this Paper Mario? Boss. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> There's a boss in this game that farts on you, and I don't oh condone that. Oh my god! I need to Even play this. <laughs> Even fuck? as a kid, I was like, "This is awful. It's so fucking nasty, need- dude. It's." disgusting he he like he has a rocket jump where he just <laughs> farts and what the f- dude? and the it's it, and it's a parody of game of death by bruce lee oh my god <laughs> because he's a you're ascending a t- you're oh ascending a tower by farting it's awful oh i hate god. it but it exists and it's real and they <laughs> they animated it. It's real. As, oh God, this game's fucking crazy. We didn't even talk about it yet, but uh, the whole premise is that the monkeys are brainwashing humans by right. making terrible television. Making the, they're, yeah, they're making movies. television yeah. and movies that are so bad <laughs> that people just become stupid. This they think the couch potatoes. Game. They're like yeah. they, they will all they're, become yeah. couch potatoes with our mindless, boring content. <laughs> The main protagonists of the other games, Ape Escape 1 and 2, can't save the day. They can't save the day because they actually watch TV and they're fucking Yeah, I thought and- that. <laughs> it has like a cutaway shot of like some characters I that I didn't recognize. And I was like, okay, that must be like characters from the other game. <laughs> and they're just... It's so funny, dude. This game is awesome. But it's great because oh. it ties into the... It's doing like a pastiche of like a bunch of... Like there's a horror... There's a horror level, which yes. is awesome, which right. is my favorite one that I yeah. played for mm. sure. Saturday the 16th. Yeah, yeah. Saturday the 16th, <laughs> where it's there's just like, uh, there's just all of the monkeys are in situations that are just like ripped straight out of horror movies. And yeah, it's awesome. They reference everything. There's a reference to Jason Voorhees. There's a reference to the fucking, there's a fucking reference to um, The Exorcist at one point. <laughs> What like just f- and it, it, it's just like you just go into this room and this monkey's head is just spinning 360 and it just plays a it just plays a clip like yeah <laughs> it's so fucking silly dude so i mean like there's a lot 
obviously thematically it's it's crazy but the thing i came away respecting this game so much like it might not necessarily be my specific thing uh but what this game is and how it's made i was shocked like routinely shocked i mean we talked about already like the controls threw me off and Mm -hmm. i was pleasantly surprised especially as someone who's like very bullish on the idea that like games can and maybe in some cases even should like just do weird control schemes to encourage yes, like different ways of interaction and difficulty and whatnot. I understand that that's not possible for everyone. That's why I but- wanted you guys in on mm-hmm. it because you guys get it. Fucked up controls make a game, bro. Yeah, and then and, you know t- stealing your gear was. I was like, oh man, like it's not like it's not an easy game. It's not hard, but they're like they kind of put yeah, this friction. There's a lot of friction in this. And the other thing is, is there's like, there's like a certain level of open ended or like player agency in this, mm. that level when you're, um, the, the, the two are going around on the, on the race cars, it's like the second or third level. Mm. And I, at first I was like, all right, I got to get in this car and I got to chase him down. That's how I got to do this. And I realized that I was like, oh, they're, they don't, they're letting me drive whatever so i turned around and i just ran head first into one of them and i did that like three times and i was like i was impressed at the game which you know if it was maybe some i I can't think of another game off the top of my head that would do this but like if it was more prescriptive it would be like it would you would have to win the race change it yeah yeah or um and then the second one I didn't even use the car. I used my hula hoop. I just hula hooped right into it like three times. And I was like, I feel like I figured out a solution to a problem that was different than what the, like the solution that it was implied was. And I found that to be really rewarding. And for this game, that's like, you know, it's this cute little actiony platformer style game from like, you know, uh, whatever, uh, 2000 something, what? 2003, Four or something like 2000, that. Two thousand. Yeah, I, I actually don't 2005, know. Two thousand and five. Uh, Japan okay. and then two thousand six America. Hmm. So like okay. that era, like you know, I, I just don't. You know that that sort of thing happens a lot, I guess. But I just didn't expect it from this game specifically, and I was really impressed. Yeah, no, that's an amazing. Like that, I was literally going to go on this point about like, because am I stupid? Are you supposed to fight the blue monkey blue in the uh, gunslinger form? You can. Okay. You don't have. I mean, you don't have to. It, <laughs> it, it all depends on if you want or not. Like you can use the you can use the stunt club. You can use the slingshot. Well, whatever that's, works. That's for exactly you. Although, it. Although, quite frankly, like the it, it it is that that moment is very much like oh it's a cowboy showdown yeah. you should probably use mm-hmm. it but you don't have like to. I was so lazy I I like fucking just took out my stun <laughs> the stun rod and went up and bapped him a couple times after getting lucky and then it's just like it, there's a part like where it, it it transitions into a second like he's Gatling gunning yes and mm-hmm. it let me like crouch down because I was like oh shit I don't know if I can get there and then like you're like on the ground behind some yeah. minor cover and it's like it's actually working <laughs> like the game's so cool oh yeah there oh. you you can did you know that you can actually pretend to be dead i didn't no. I, what no the, yeah you if you if you crouch down and you press in both sticks you're you can pretend to die like in fucking metal gear what? solid oh three God. and then <sighs> the monkeys are like oh, okay i guess he's dead <laughs> and they just leave you alone wow. you can also like crouch you can like crouch you down and prone. like yeah you can go prone and out. use your gadgets yeah it's, that's really you can, impressive. You can you can turn this into like a stealth game if you want because they have alert <laughs> you phases technically, and stuff like yeah. that. It's nuts. So, <laughs> yeah, obviously, yeah. obviously, Billy knows this, but like I, yes. when I played the hour, I also this morning watched uh, some just some like video essay ish type game because there's only a few on this game, and I just was like, curious what other people would think about it. Yeah, no, and th- this is still dude, a niche I had game. no idea. So I played as. Hey, Kai. And yeah, yes, same. I know what you're going to say. And you play as, as his so cool. the girl. She's like an idol. So like some of yes. the monkeys like get giddy and embarrassed or like excited to see her and yeah. make it makes it easier to capture them. So it's like this. Some monkeys are literally in love with you because you're a pop star. It's this <laughs> entirely different play style between the characters that they yes. don't 
put up front, which I mean, like modern design sensibilities would tell you, you should say that there's differences and you should make that very explicit and clear. Mm. I thought, I think it's very cool that it's like, if I had just decided to play as the girl, I would have had an entirely different experience with this game than what I did. <laughs> um, I think that's really cool. They, yeah, they, they just like, when you, when you approach as Yumi, you approach one of the, one of the monkeys that is in love with you. They just like fucking, <laughs> their eyes are just like oh god just fucking big <laughs> hearts and they just stare at you like just brain dead it's so silly yeah there's so much about this game that i just like i mean it's kind of trite to say but yeah there's no way it would have been made today like no, i just it's, pr- on it's, premise it would alone be ridiculous on premise alone like like yeah you're you're like going around uh collecting apes that are trying to like make a tv show that's bad uh, it's like something <laughs> sick would be like no, like <laughs> like who does like who does this even appeal to kind of thing. This like, is so high concept, jeez. <laughs> it's like they've all got a, all got like uh, th- th- hats on that that are like making them smarter. I think. But also, yeah, 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 yeah. No, the 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 monkey, the monkeys, the helmets with the little light, the blinking lights that tell you if they when when it's blue they're calm, when it's red they're panicking and alert, when it's yellow they're searching. <laughs> It's boosting their brain power. <laughs> oh my god, it it actually is Metal Gear. Um, but yeah, no, it, it is actually a helmet that I believe I believe it makes them smarter. But also, it, it you you control like if you have the because Spectre in this game, uh, you've probably seen him has yeah, like yeah. a monkey helmet, and I think his actually allows him to control the other monkeys. But I'm not a hundred percent sure off the top of my head. Don't have I, I don't think they really on Pat they. Well, because I, I, I've played this game a shit ton of times, but I'm going to be honest, I only played Ape Escape 1 maybe twice, and I can't really remember it as well as this. Mm-hmm. So actually, that that's a good kind of like segue into another question I had, which was I hadn't played the first two. How much of a change gameplay wise was three compared to one and two? Three. OK, so. I mean, Ape Escape One is on the PS One. Right. It's it was it was made to show off like, hey, look at what you can do with a Dual Shock. You should buy a Dual right. Shock with because originally, for people who didn't know, the PS One controller did not have uh, thumbsticks. Mm-hmm. It only had the uh, D pad. And this game came out and was basically like, you literally cannot play this game without a Dual Shock. And it was basically just showing off like you look at what we can do with gaming mm. were they uh, so did so, it have the thumbstick like attack yep okay interesting yeah it, it every single thing about it was a bit jankier because it was the first game right uh, ape escape 2 it, it, it ape escape 2 is weird because it, i i don't think it plays bad but it doesn't it it feels like it was uh they were figuring out how to make ps2 games with that one so the level designs are is a bit mm, it, it's uh-huh. like mixed. Okay. This one is base this one is like m- the perfect in my opinion because it has the great game the, like the amazing gameplay from Ape Escape 2 with a bunch of added like tweaks and gimmicks and interesting stuff with the level design of the first game. Okay. Where it's like it, you have more like freedom to explore different things. Although there is a lot of things that this game adds like with the monkey AI cuz that's the thing. Like I, I I it doesn't feel like it it's one of those things where it's like if it if they if the devs do their job right, you will never figure it out, but the monkey AI is kind of com- like complex. Where like the way the monkeys act in this game is very natural compared to the way they act in like the first and second game. Hmm. It's it, it's it's interesting, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. What was everyone else's favorite levels? Uh, I'm wondering. Out of the out of the the, the for, blue. Yeah, yeah, it was the horror one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was yeah. the horror one. <laughs> the yeah. horror one. I I I think the one. <sighs> That one I was talking about where like the race cars, it stuck in my mind so much because I think that was the first one where I realized what this game was doing, um, mm. where I was like, oh, it was okay. being a bit yeah. silly. Mm-hmm. Um, plus the jumping on those uh, road cars. I like, I did oh, yeah. to jump right like four times. So, but yeah. there is a level for me. My favorite level isn't we haven't, you haven't played it, but it is the ninja level. The ninja level is so fun because the parkour feels so it, it's really simplistic, but it's so f- satisfying, and just using that morph is so fun. Great game, dude. I know I keep saying it, but... I was sincerely impressed. Like, I was surprised oh, yeah. at how much I was into it. 
Mm-hmm. What did you guys think of the music? Okay, yeah, that's another thing. Like, because uh, holy oh. shit, dude! I, oh. I am, oh. I am, I am unabashedly one of those like drum bass jungle like sickos. I don't dude, care. Dude, and Soichi Tarada is actually one of the best. When it when it that man, in, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, no, this is two thousands as fuck, and this is this is the era. Yes, dude. This is my era. Let's go. Yeah, no, that he, like his this is like early nineties deep house jungle, and it is so playful and so goofy and so fucking fun. That's the thing about this game. Everything's so fucking playful all the goddamn time. It, everything's a joke to this fucking game. <laughs> it's fucking. It's so fun. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's it's a video game ass video game. Like oh, yeah. yeah, like like it knows it, what it is and it it's it doesn't. Yeah, it's not but, a shame uh, of it. The music is made by Soichi Tarada, who also who was the one that made the music for the original Ape Escape, and it is it is like. One of the biggest inspirations for me, my music, when I when I went into like getting my degree mm. and all that, w- he was like one of my big influences. And like this man, I I need people to go listen to fucking his album on. It's an album on Spotify. It's called Sounds from the Far East. It's a re-release of like a bunch of his old tracks, and it is so fucking good, dude amazing artist <laughs> he plays that korg triton like a psychopath <laughs> yeah no the music was uh oh god i just love i love when games have level music you know where like it yes every everything feels so distinct because like as soon as you like get in like obviously the visuals are all way different and stuff like that but the music just hits and it's like you're like way into the you're like oh, okay this is this yeah sitting this is how this is gonna feel for the entire thing and uh yeah episode Escape Three is like uh, the, the ones yeah. that it does for the levels is so so cool. When you're like, I mean, when you're like in the big city, it's out, there, it's like a big city action theme. And when you're in the cowboy city, it's like very very western with the like whistling and everything. It's cool, man. Yeah, that's uh, that's why I think everybody should play it legally. How do I how do I get the uh, Metal Gear Solid? Uh, <laughs> yeah, how do you unlock finish that? the game. How do you unlock that? Finish the game. Finish okay. the game. Okay, that's okay. Finish that's the game doable. and make enough money. Sure. Make make enough money. It's not too expensive, but finishing the game is really easy. You don't. I don't think you have to one hundred percent it. I think you just have to finish the game. And there's. I mean, it, it's not. It's not very long. It's like six hours, maybe. Uh, I, nice. I actually, it's eight hours. Yeah, I just looked at it. It's eight hours, and then you can unlock the mezzle. You can unlock mezzle gear solid. Get nice. it, mezzle. Yeah, fucking sweet. Everything's everything's always ape related. There's always <laughs> it, it, I, my favorite one is in the tutorial. It's like just uh, Aki, like the the ladies, like teaching you yes. how to use stuff, yeah. and just like it pops up. It's like when you find a monkey with the monkey radar, it'll appear in the monkey cam at the bottom right of the screen. It's like <laughs> <laughs> it's all oh, monkeys. another. Oh, also another thing uh, in the metal gear in the mezzle gear uh, thing. Uh, Fox Sound is called a pound, oh, I course. think. <laughs> and you you can actually collect monkey tags instead of dog tags. What? And every every single monkey, just like Metal Gear, every single monkey has a fucking monkey tag. Oh man, this game is this game is so much. There's so fucking it, it, it's so much to unpack constantly. Uh, you know, I've been looking at uh, YouTube looking for reviews of Ape Escape because I feel like I've never heard about this game. And there's like a couple, but most of them, like the grand majority of all Ape Escape coverage, especially post one, is like nothing. Like no one really cares yeah. about it. And I like, do you think it's just the like the the graphic design, like how they uh, visually design the monkeys, that's like not appealing to the youth today? Because like I feel like the anime I, characters. I don't do better. know. <laughs> like, I mean, I don't know. I I I I can't say what it is about these games that is. Because I, I don't think I, I think there's a very good reason why these games aren't being made anymore. Oh sure. Not only because of how insane, <laughs> like, 
the the concept is yeah. you can't sell this to people dude how the how the fuck do you sell this? i guess gaming kind of moved on a bit like by the time the series was being phased out like people were expecting yeah. different things from games i mean people grew up now they were playing metal gear solid 3 instead of right. mezzle gear you know which is crazy because like going back it feels so rich and detailed and interesting and like again, as you say, playful in a way that like so many games trended away from, or at least like yes. slowly. I don't know, and I feel like that's why I, I was talking about it in the break uh, to the other two. Why like Borderlands, uh, you know, was so interesting back in the day because it comes out in the 360. It was all like mud guns and like fucking brown, yeah. and then it's just like <laughs> fun, and there's a, like a pop of color in that. And and I feel like Ape Escape has that Absolute kind of appeal. Pee pee poo poo games. Yeah. yeah. It's Damn. colorful, bro. Yeah. You, the monkeys are fucking silly. <laughs> I, th I feel like, you know, I, I feel like this game might have a better chance. Like these games might have a better chance nowadays. Cause I, 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 well, you know, a lot of people are, are looking for experiences that are like goofier and sillier, especially with the indie game sphere. I don't mm -hmm. know if like Sony are the people that should be making these games nowadays, considering <laughs> yeah, like, I, yeah. I, I just don't, I just don't think it's, I just don't think it's it's in their best interest. I would but. definitely love for more games to be like directly inspired by it. Like maybe yeah, I was gonna yeah. say I don't. There's got to be some, right? Yeah. Mm, I totally. I don't know of any indie games that are <laughs> aping on the ape escape <laughs> concept. Uh, I just found one called Spectre Collector. I don't know if it's Spectre. real. I think it might be a. Um, oh, sorry. I think this is a uh, like made in that. PS4 Dreams thing uh, software. Yeah, I, I NVM. I, I don't think I don't think Ape Escape. No one would dare ape that. No, <laughs> no one would dare. I I know that there's been a few like un, Unreal Engine remakes hmm. of the first uh -huh. game. <laughs> Unreal. Wait, you mean like let's get modern graphics on Ape Escape? Yeah. Real Hire this man. Yeah, no, no, yeah. I mean, <laughs> dude, <laughs> yeah. Sony Computer Entertainment America, hire this man. <laughs> he knows yeah. how to put the entire post processing suite on his. Unreal <laughs> project, go for it. Uh, yeah, no, I, I don't, I don't I think there's any like other game adoration. like Ape Escape. I do. That's why it's so. That's and why it's so lighting. special, man. What's missing from Ape Escape, bro? Ambient occlusion, <laughs> like this. <laughs> RT on. Effect. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh fuck! What a nightmare. Is there? Um, a <laughs> uh, we got some community questions. We can banana we, tracing. We can go through. Uh, uh, Tyler Murphy asks, uh, what corny reference or pun would your ape Sona be and what color pants would you have? Ape class. I don't know. There's so many good ones. I want to be Neo from, I want to be like an, an ape Neo, uh, from the matrix with like a long drink, uh, trench coat. And then I'd have like orange pants. I don't know what orange pants mean. I want the next, if they ever make another one of these fucking games, I want it to be like music references. Oh. And I would like to be, I would like to be the My Chemical Romance monkey. <laughs> I want to see some monkeys in a pit. Like I want like, oh, in like hardcore, or like death metal and shit. Yes. That's what oh. I want. I want to see some monkeys fucking thrashing. Yeah, dude, like do some spin kicks. <laughs> Like, let's go. Let's fucking go. <laughs> I want to see them under the bridge doing the fucking goth, yeah. goth rave yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> oh my that's like God. A, that's how that's how Svict is controlling the apes now. He's turned the middle into goth kids. With my Oh, they're con they're they're trying to they're trying to save the world with uh, or not save the world, but like control humans with their trash music. Oh, the God. implication being that like K and and the uh, I don't know what the, the lady's name is <laughs> K and Yumi and they're just they're now just fucking and, and, oh I mean that they're hey, stuck that in the trance sense. hey you know what Sony hire me I fucking love this series dude I'll fucking fix it <laughs> uh, you'll get a gajillion sales hire me oh dude yeah no I, I'd like to be a little My Chemical Romance monkey and then it, it says na 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 <laughs> get it what would your uh, ape Sona be K Bash <laughs> Oh, Ape Sona. Ape. I don't. I need a good answer, and I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's dead. I, I have no idea. I don't even know who I am Damn. anymore. Damn. Wow. <laughs> Existential this game, this crisis. Game did a monkey. number on. This game, this game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. A blue pants wearing monkey that is just having a fucking moment. <laughs> Where do I fit into this? A, to world? a, t a total recall monkey. <laughs> Oh, they made a game about that. It's called Final Fantasy VII. You should check Ooh. it out. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Ape's oh, own fuck. ideas, Brendan. Yeah, it, it would just be this monkey who's like, he's really into finding tiny little crawl spaces and just like digging through them, like little labyrinths under the ground. And he pops out and like, you have to like chase him. That, there's that, that's that, that actually a gimmick in the game. Well, oh, it, it would be that, and maybe yeah, I'd, it, you, uh, it'd be in a suit of armor, and uh, <laughs> and if you beat him, the playground adding rules. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> kid on playground adding rules, but thinks everything is a dungeon. There you I go. I feel that's, like that's, that's a fun game to play. Like, how many times can you say weird things before they're actually just mechanics in Ape Escape Three? That we have <laughs> I mean, that's actually that's actually a, a mechanic because you at one point you get a race car, oh, like a, a little RC car, and then you. you you use like you can control like uh the rc car with one stick and you with the other stick and you have to scare off some monkeys that are stuck in labyrinths from time to time they literally put that in metal gear solid 4 holy shit this is just the same game yeah it, <laughs> dude it, it, i mean it's kind of weird how many fucking how many things dude these games are the same game maybe same that's game. why i like metal gear <laughs> yeah and that's why I like Metal Gear now because they have the goofy I, I guys. A, they do have goofy bunch they, of freaks. Sometimes they meow. Sometimes they go. <laughs> <laughs> they'll they'll steal your stuff and beat you up. <laughs> Damn, yeah. same Ugh. game. Oh, Weird man. controls. You got to hold down like both the the of the oh, shoulder buttons God. and then press zero and move the stick up to turn into your you know yeah same thing. Yeah, we got any uh, final thoughts before we uh, was there not another question there is another one two- but it is just like a fuck Mary kill for like three different apes and I'm like I don't know if that's worth even <laughs> I don't even remember the name fuck was- Mary kill ape from ape escape I I from super monkey ball and Amy from Congo yeah, I Congo I- <laughs> I'm not answering that see, see this is why I didn't say it <laughs> okay I- I- is it I I a baby I'm for, aren't they all just monkeys oh. anyway? Like, yeah, wait, <laughs> how fucking right? They're, they're, they're all gorilla. monkeys. Right? <laughs> they're they're all monkeys. <laughs> but you could have a long, fulfilling life with fucking Look, Amy from Congo. I didn't want to right. embarrass the uh, the question Oscar by even dignifying it, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> no, Amy. Amy can talk. I would marry Amy. I'm not answering the other ones. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know any of the apes, so I decline to comment. Amy, Amy is the one that was uh, that, that the monkey that's like, "Give me orange, me orange, love me orange, give me you." Oh, okay. Yeah, she's real. Anyway, <laughs> what, are, what is everyone's final thoughts on Ape Escape Three? Or- play it now. I've got to play. It, it was surprising. <laughs> Yeah. You've got to play it. Gotta play you it. <laughs> you've got to play this shit, man. It's fucking crazy. Uh, how how long is it, uh, Billy, to, to beat? Because I think uh, I, I want to go it's back. Like it's like eight hours? It's, a, it's a eight hours, eight I'm hours, pretty okay. sure. Okay, cool. I, I think. I, it's not very long. Yeah. you know. It's, um, they really don't make them like they used to. It's a, it's a romp. It's six hours. It's a romp. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, it's six hours. But if you wanna, if you want a hundred percent, it's eight hours. Okay, that's okay. like a work day for K Bash. I know. <laughs> well, oh, look, I do my work in the morning, and then I do my playtime at night, which is also work, but we don't call it that. Uh, I see. Oh, Jesus, okay. cr- you're nuts. I, I am literally insane. Anyway, <laughs> apparently. But no, I got to play this because I, I want to title a video "The Profound Insanity of Ape Escape." Now. But there you go. There you go. Yeah. There you I go. did that. I'm fucking winning. <laughs> Forcing people around me to play Ape Escape so they can fucking bring it to the wider <laughs> audience at large. That's baby. right. I, I, I'm not even going to lie. I, I already have a script written for a video <laughs> on Ape Escape 3. I just never did it. Actually, oh, man. That was the, sorry. I do have one final question for you, Billy. Oh. The translation between the american release and like the japanese release like do you know if how much difference no. has there been any like discussion on that i have no idea okay. i have no idea because if they uh, i mean I, i'm sure it's as silly i'm sure there's as many wor- like puns and wordplay yeah I'm, sh- I'm sure it's it's i'm sure it's similar right i don't fucking know what I am i Japanese? yeah I don't, some, I'm not some Japanese. of the, the jokes and stuff i was <laughs> or like the moments i was like wow this is like incredibly awkward in a very funny way where, but uh, like, I'm like, I don't know if it would have been the same in Japanese or if like, uh, how oh, the I, would, I have worked. no idea. Yeah. I have zero. Anyway, idea. sorry to continue down the train. Brendan, what was your, uh, final, final takeaway? Oh yeah. No, it's just, it's just really, it's a surprising game. And I'm, I'm glad that, uh, y'all invited me on to be on this one. Cause I'm glad I got to play it. Like it's not a type of 
game that I'm familiar with or a genre that I really am that uh, versed in. So I feel like I uh, I came away with a more well-rounded video game uh, knowledge. And I mean that sincerely. Yeah. I, I kind of feel the same way. And it's and it's been a, a great part of uh, doing this, this show is that I, I've played a, yeah, no, a game sure. that I probably wouldn't have touched otherwise. And Ape Escape 3, 3 being the most notable of these, where I'm like, man, this is like a... It feels like a classic to me now in like in like a way of like a game that I haven't had any interaction with before. I'm like, damn, yeah. this is like, I can see. Now you see, now you understand why I constantly talk about monkeys all the time. I fucking love those. Yeah, there isn't really anything else like it. It's, it, it is actually like so unique. It's so unique. You have to play it to understand yeah. why it's so special. I think we'll, we'll end it there. Um, yeah, let's wrap it up. Thanks, thanks everyone for coming on. Thanks again, Brendan and K Bash. Um, Do you guys have anything you want to plug before we head sure. out? Sure. Uh, hit yeah. me up on www.youtube.com/slash K Bash. I make videos <laughs> on video games. <laughs> no fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> on YouTube, no fucking no. way, bro. <laughs> no. I would recommend people go check out his Steambot Chronicle videos. That's right. Because yeah. that video, that video has a lot of talk about. Uh, I mean, a game that controls pretty much exactly like Ape Escape. <laughs> so if you like, if you like discussion about uh, stuff like that, check it out. Also, the story of that game is it's interesting. Whoo, yeah, it, uh, <laughs> it's a lot. I, I whoo, 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 yeah, it is. It's fucking <laughs> awesome. Check it out. I would say uh, go go check out his video on uh, Vanillaware games because I'm in that one. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, my that's plug. true. That's <laughs> true. 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 No, plug your, uh, hey, <laughs> your own shit. Hey, plug your own shit. Um, I have a, a I have a Twitter account. That's yep. Oh my god, <laughs> oh, <laughs> you have god. a YouTube channel called The Crawl. I do. Where I you put out a video about dungeon crawlers that came out in 2023 <laughs> that was the most recent one yes and i'm working on one about final fantasy 7 and i uh, oh, i do a lot of God. developer interviews and i've got a few coming up and then uh, i also write for GameSpot and life hacker and other places you can find all of that when i tweet about it on twitter i'm sorry on x.com <laughs> formerly <laughs> known Brendan as twitter underscore lh Mm. Yes. Are you looking? Are you a young, confused person looking for a new personality? Become a dungeon sicko today at the crawl on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> it'll fuck. It'll fuck your life up. I ruined. You'll never be the same. I ruined, ruined Billy's me. day recently oh. <laughs> because I recommended a dungeon crawler to him, forgetting about oh. one specific floor of this dungeon crawler and i tuned in to see billy having <sighs> the worst morning trying to figure out one specific puzzle and i i now get it the opportunity to say i'm so sorry <laughs> so, so dude sorry. i've never it drove me crazy yeah. that puzzle is actually ass i'm sorry i, I legitimately I couldn't believe him, it like after that and i was like hey i feel <laughs> responsible i'm sorry <laughs> I mean, I I, th I had a really good time, and I actually did go back. And you recommended another game that I really enjoyed and finished called Zanky Zero. So, like, whatever. That's good because Maybe, I, 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 my whole list of recommendations moments. pretty weird, and that one has its own. <laughs> it, it has <laughs> it, it already. You already gave me like when you told me like, oh, you should if you want to try new uh, new dungeon crawler, try out Zanky Zero. And then you also put an asterisk, and you were like, creepy shit incoming. <laughs> yeah, this is weird stuff. Warning. This game is for creeps and freaks. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking creeps. Or people who can ignore it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, thanks, thanks again, guys, for uh, showing up. Uh, yeah, if you want you your so life much. ruined by uh, Dungeon Crawlers, check out Brendan's channel. Check out KBS's oh, channel yeah. as well. Just ruin your life now. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> right now. Thanks so much for listening. This episode would not have been possible without the help from our patrons, such as Alan Diver, Art of Ogden, Beck Davis, Bier, Bland But Funny, Boo Boo Lou, Brain Soup, Caffeine Addicted Chemist, Cassandra Crash, Chris Chapman, Christian Van Engen, Delling City, Dog Named Bear, DX Studios, Echo Stalker, Eric Scott Gillies, Ethereal, Generic Phoenix, Guy Beam, Handsome Destiny, Hater 115, John Requires Lasagna, Kawaii Boy Toy, Lambda, Leo the Geotech, Loudon Woodworth, Mr. Shirt, 
Random Diamonds, Rocco the Raccoon, Smeet Mono, Spherical May, The Frost Ace, Ulbert, Winnie Rab, and Will 9455. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll see you next time.